Episode 140. We're All back. The fucking bullshit. Episode oh, 140. Episode, yes, I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Woo, 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 woo. You woo. amped? I'm super amped now. I just got, I was actually really tired and I just got the fucking energy, dude. Yeah, as soon man. as the mics got on, I think it has to do something with my own like biology because I have like a lot of electricity in me. But as soon as the mic goes near me, just you like have electricity in you. I have, yeah, I have a lot. Dude, I do. Person. I get shocked nonstop. Yeah, dude. I'm I get you. shocked nonstop. Wow. I'm, yeah, my Maybe mom. That's why we're linked. Well, definitely, it's definitely an electrical thing. I knew that way back when. My mom really? has a thing. My mom, like when she does her little like running trail, she goes under like the big tower things. So that's and, how. Uh, yeah, that's she how says you get, like, she, her heart. Kids. Her heart will fucking. Her, it'll flutter. Flutter a little bit. Did she Very do that? Sensitive to electric. Did she do that when she was pregnant? Did she hang out with like telephone pole like under wires and Probably, shit? Probably, yeah. A lot of wires. I would assume. Yeah. She, yeah, she spent a lot. She probably spent a lot of time that's around. That's why you the, came uh, out as a fucking X Men. I was also umbilical cord around the neck too. Were you? Yeah. A little, little fucking. Yeah, that makes sense. Cut off some killing. fucking little, things little, that should be up there. I mean, it's just it didn't make it up to your brain. You don't want to get into the world of birth trauma too. Oh yeah, true. So it's like that's like a traumatized. It's like a traumatic it's a rough, experience. It's a rough start. I mean, you're totally Welcome confused. To you're totally confused, and you come like choking out of a vagina. Everyone's screaming and crying. You're just like. Ugh. <laughs> it's pretty hard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to feel the energy from the mic. Yes, dude. Yeah, dude. There's what? there's a whole thing where people uh, it's called like birth trauma therapy, where yeah. they try to get people into like a. Some people use LSD, but they try to get you to remember and relive your birth, and you rebirth yourself, and like you access the memories. So that's life. retarded, dude. If no, some no, people no, can no, remember no, it. no one can remember that. You never know. Literally, your brain is not capable of remembering that. You would never know. I do know. Really? Yes. So there's no way you can remember. I know the when neuroscience people, behind that. When do people start to remember? Whenever I started, which was when I was about like three. So that's when you What's start. What's your first memory? I, I remember building, when my parents were building their house and the piles of dirt that I would play on. So you like dirt piles I too. I love dirt piles, dude. dude I, I have can't. photos of me with like a Fisher-Price construction helmet controlling the dirt piles in the backyard. And I was oh. devastated when the house finally got finished. Yeah, it sucks. And the dirt piles were gone. Damn. Yeah, man. Dirt piles never I left. I know you still have dirt piles. You still love dirt the piles. Dirt piles never left the compound, dude. They stay. <laughs> yeah, There's they, always dirt piles. And I would around. hang out uh my sister's like softball games behind the dugout, the dirt Ooh, piles. A, there's always a good dirt pile. Good dirt dirt piles. There was a place in Havertown called the Skadium. When my fat dyke sisters played <gasps> fucking softball. <gasps> <gasps> no, I wouldn't say that, dude. Industry, if you're listening, dude, I wouldn't say shit like that. I'm Hollywood now, dude. I'm strictly business. Join the Patreon, or dude, you're not a part of this. Anymore. You're not part of this family. I watch, and that's the, all we talk about. Now I watched the Glenn Show. I can't so if you said Dyke like that, right please, away. Dude, dude, you gotta start taking their hits. I'll take. I'll, take I'll be the fucking body man, dude. I'll be the bag man. <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> you gotta start taking some hits for me, for bro. Sure. <laughs> put it. Put whatever on me. You said Dyke. I might as well, dude. I'm public enemy number one in my class, dude. Oh, yeah. Tell me about Dude, it. Dude, so I'm in there last night. I mean, I was about to t talk about the ice pile, the skadium. Wait, 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 wait. Hit, the first. hit the ice pile. Hit the ice pile. Hit the ice pile. It's literally just an ice pile at the skadium, but sometimes it'd be like dyed pink. So like, it would, like this oh. weird pile of shaved ice we'd all play on as kids with whatever weird chemicals. <laughs> whatever <laughs> chemicals we like, make oh, it sweet. <laughs> Let's go play on the ice pile. <laughs> yeah, you catch the ice pile at skadium. That was, all, that was awesome. But the uh, dude, last night, I'm in class. Thought I was coming off a good week, man. I mean, it's like these classes kind of melt. The kryptonite to these classes is like, all right, so as soon as you go into a, a solutions-based thing, you're like, so what's like, what kind of solutions you guys cooking up here? I've been I've been here for a year now. Yeah. Haven't heard anything in the way of maybe coming up with, you know, just, just tack one at a time. Yeah. People are like, that's a really good point. I never thought about it like that. I'm like, okay. So then like, so every, you know, the class ended the last time on a good note. And then this week was religion. So it's Jewish, someone's making some Jewish, fucking... Jewish and Muslim week, basically. Yeah. Christian privilege. Dude, don't you forget that's a privilege. Now, if you're a Christian, you're a privilege. That's a privilege status. So it's like, so they're like talking about, uh, they, t they show a Ted talk. Apparently if you go to school, all they have to do is show you YouTube clips and they can take fucking 40 grand from you. So they just show you Ted talks. This lady comes out. And she, she was like, I am Muslim. Uh, they're trying to like not let Sharia law into effect. And like, it's actually like a really cool set of laws and like, it's not bad at all. So like, don't be fucking anti. Don't be Islamophobic. You should definitely, <laughs> you should definitely be down with Sharia law. It's not that bad. Don't be scared of it. So she's just like, and dude, it really was like the worst, 
Most was generic. she wearing a fucking costume? Bro, so then she's now. She she's, better be. She's dressed down. She's dressed down. So this was the big thing. So there's a big, you're, you're jumping ahead to her big reveal. Yeah. Don't take her moment away. Okay. So, dude, she's like, oh, before I get out of here, there's one more thing I want to say, but hold, hold on one second. She just disappears off to the side of the stage. I'm like, all right, she's definitely putting on like the fucking yeah. gear. Comes back. It takes actually kind of like an awkwardly long time. Comes back out in the gear and she's like, do you guys, are you guys afraid of me? <laughs> and I was like, like, no, you weirdo. Oh my God. It wasn't even the full like shredder costume. It was just kind of like, there's like the whole face. Exp- like she did like, she came out oh. with Mother Teresa. So it's like, dude, like, no one, no one's getting bugged on the Mother Teresa. Come on. The shredder costume is intimidating. The full costume? Yeah. The when full- she, they look like the uh, Pac-Man ghosts <laughs> that, <laughs> that chase Pac-Man around. Yeah. <laughs> so like. That's she, what happened, dude. That was 9-11. You think 9-11 was, was a bunch of Pac-Man ghosts chasing him. You think and then that, he, after 9-11, he ate the fucking thing that makes him go crush the ghosts. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. You think the towers got hit and it was like, wee, 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 wee. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dude. Dude, so I'm in there. The whole way over is like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> They're just collecting pellets all through the sky. Chasing, dude. <laughs> they were hitting, they hit the fucking uh, the USS Coal. Was that it? They hit the coal. Oh, yeah. They hit a bunch of them. And then finally they hit the, the mother load. Yeah, hit the jackpot, and Pac-Man. then the Pac Man ate one of those dots that makes him chase the ghost. The ghost <laughs> was like, "Oh fuck, 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 fuck!" <laughs> we we chased him. Should have done it. So this lady does that, and then they, so they pause it there. The teacher's like, "Then you that was pretty crazy how like she came off and like put the dirt like the the hijab or whatever on the Durka. Like, the Durka. She's like, <laughs> that was pretty powerful. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? I'm just in my head like. Oh, obviously nothing was impressive about what i just saw it was like i knew she was going to go do that first of all and it was just that was like the most in uninformative talk i've ever seen in my life i'm kind of mad that we're sitting here and like you guys are just showing me fucking youtube clips i could do this by myself i do do this by myself and i do a better job at it so i'm like this is ridiculous so i'm so i'm a sitting in class i'm like all right i'm not, i'm gonna chill on this shit and then it comes up to uh it's like now we're gonna talk about jewish oppression so i'm like <laughs> i'm sitting here i'm like okay uh-oh Dude, the video and anti-Semitism. They said, I'm like, "All right, whatever video they pick." It was just like definitely not Muslims, white nationalists, and they're like the roots of anti-Semitism come from Europe. And in my head, I'm like, "What? You guys are going to talk about like there's like pre-Christian anti-Semitism? You're going to start?" And that, all I brought up, I was like, "So we watched the whole thing. It's just people on there who are like the word globalist is a uh, slur for Jews." And I'm like watching this, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" So like. They're like, how does everyone feel? And there was one, there, you know, someone was in there who was Jewish, and they were like, uh, you, could, you could tell it was Jewish Day, dude. I think they were excited. What The Jew was hyped? I mean, dude, it's like everyone. Like, I've getting... been telling everyone. <laughs> yeah, things everyone. aren't going well for us. <laughs> <laughs> dude, so it was like. Finally. Well, it, you know, it was like, you know, the shining moment. And I, I should have maybe, again, this is the, the critique I received. Maybe it was the wrong time to, like, talk about being shown what i believe was propaganda (laughs) i was just like dude my problem and i'm like it's not with the content of the video although it's strange they started the history in like europe 100 years ago but whatever aside from that that, that's, that's a weird place to start the ball but it was like why are we being shown these like very specific and politically driven clips on these topics like why does it have to be like that it's really bizarre to me to have to view this whole thing through a very narrow political lens and people were like oh what narrow political lens like what are you talking about and i was like neo-marxism like it was on the syllabus that we were discovering we we're going through these topics through a neo-marxist le- it says it on there and i'm like that's a really weirdly constricted political view and there's no reason to like strictly go through that view for these things damn dude you are a fucking new age jp Bro, it's insane. It, it's, it's, a, it's bloody insane. It's like, dude. The neo Marxists are taking over the classroom. Dude, they are. So they, they are just, taking dude, over the classroom. You didn't, I didn't get to At talk. Every university. I didn't get to talk to you last week. All of academia. Dude, last week we watched a video. The Globalists. Did I tell you about the video? What video? <sighs> Bro, I haven't talked to you like this. True, we haven't we talked to you. We haven't chatted, dude. The video. You've been getting some fucking hotel calls from the fucking. The bull, dude, out there covered in his own piss. <laughs> <laughs> what was the video? Dude, it's called If These Halls Could Talk. Director Lin- Lee Monwa. This guy, you know, he's TED talking. He does his whole thing. Lee Monwa? Lee Monwa. So he, dude, he, he brings in, it's like three black dudes, a black chick, two Latino dudes, two Asians, like four white people. What's he kick him out of his bodega? <laughs> <laughs> no, he do. He follow him around his shop. What is Lee Manwa? Lee Manwa chills in traditional Chinese garb, and he's like, first of all, I can't wear this around white people. 
and blah, blah, blah. Dude, it was like this shit was super aggressive. To the point where he literally dude, said he couldn't wear that costume. Oh, around oh, white oh, yeah, dude. Oh, and yeah. Black people, the blacks and Puerto Ricans on stage were like, "Yeah, you can definitely wear that around us." Oh, dude, it, it's it's exactly. You won't get definitely made fun of by every person <laughs> on their porch in our neighborhood. I know. <laughs> well, that's you have to suspend that completely. It, it, like that whole and in this in this world that they're they're trying to get together, any misdeeds done by anyone who's not white doesn't exist and is wrong to bring up. And not even in a way of like trying to slam a whole people. There's a whole problem with people trying to slam a whole people being like black people murder each other without going through the whole context of sure. like. But it's like they're doing that in terms of like say Trump supporters, whatever. So like I'm watching this video and the uh, it's just like people in there like I, I don't know like it's just it's white people being like I didn't think you guys were human. And now I do, and I'm so sorry for that. And I'm like, what the you fuck? You didn't think Asians were human? They were talking about, no, he was talking about, it was black people. He was like, I just wasn't viewing, it was a gay Southern guy. He's like, I wasn't viewing you guys as human, but I'm gay and I understand now. Dude, I'm watching this. One guy's what? like, dude, it was crazy. And this other guy, this other white guy's like, I don't know what you want me to do. And they're like, well, he did fly out here on like a day's notice. And people like who weren't white were just like, I don't give a fuck about that. You think, oh, now it's all about him. This isn't his space. Dude, it was so crazy. It, it got to the point where eventually people were like, I don't know what to do. I, I, I'm just numb. And like, your numbness is a privilege. Like, I don't know what to say. It's like, your silence is a privilege. And they're like, why aren't you crying? Like, dude cries on demand as soon as they say that. A guy's like, Aah! we're watching this. And we, we had to watch this via Skype because like our, our school had shut down because the <laughs> fucking power went out. <laughs> So we're watching this via Skype. The globalists shut it down. Oh no, the globalists are turning, cranking up the juice, dude. Who do you think shut it down? I bet it was a patriot, dude. It probably was patriot. Cut probably the power Q. off. Q probably shut the power. Q off. probably saw what was going on. No, Q was probably like, dude, I don't none of this, nah. dude. So it was like it ended, and then it just ended with like people. It was just ended with like people being told they couldn't rationally think about these concepts. It was like they weren't allowed to talk about them. They weren't allowed to not talk about them. They weren't allowed to use rational logic on trying to explain their positions because that was just them using their privilege and trying to like dismiss other people's experience. So that's like the the thing we watch. And then afterwards, the teacher's like, it just ends with everyone crying or trying to cry and being like, just like bit better. And they would babble stuff because they weren't trying to use like the logic part, logical part of their brains because yeah. that was like you know defensive, I guess. So just people being like better better like white people rocking back and forth like there was like black hit with people the crying too. They got hit with the whole spurt so then it was like it just ended with like everybody crying and people pissed off and the one <laughs> there was this black dude in there who was rocking a shirt called it was a money monster shirt and he was wearing a fucking untied do-rag and a money monster shirt and he was like man you if you wore gear like this people wouldn't take you seriously and it's like if that guy came in here if the white guy came in here in a do-rag and a money monster t-shirt you would freak the fuck out at him it's dude it's the most insane shit no so then, one should take him seriously. No, no. He's wearing an untied do rag and a money monster shirt. What what level of respect do you think he deserves? Dude, the whole time his it's whole like, I do I fear him. Dude, I fear that he's dumb enough to attack me. His whole thing. If he's wearing a money monster t shirt. <laughs> he's dumb. So he does garner respect in that department. Like I'm gonna give him his space. Yeah. I'm gonna let the dude with the do rag and money this monster dude. shirt control his world. He was such a nerd. This guy. There were all the the dudes. Everyone on there were just. It was a pure. Of course. They didn't get a, if a dude was actually wearing that outfit, like for real, if that's what he he would have. He said, "This is some fucking weird shit." Yeah, I don't dude. fucks with what y'all doing in here, dude. This guy, leave. this whole time, it was just like your people did this to my people, and that you was made me wear this money monster <laughs> shirt. <laughs> that was the whole logic. It was now like, I only wear shirts with Looney Tunes <laughs> on them because of fucking slavery. You goddamn white piece of shit. <laughs> That's what the whole thing was. And then it was like this guy being like, "White people aren't even human to me. I don't understand." Da 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 da. da. And I'm like watching this, like this is insanity, dude. And there's Lee Manuel, like, mm, yes, mm, yes, Damn. let the anger out. Show me those white tears. Dude, I'm sitting here like, I'm, I'm like, and my face is displayed on this computer screen because we're all like linked into this thing. And I, a couple times I would just like laugh, put my head down. I'm like, this is fucking nuts, dude. So then, we, you know, it comes down to it. We, you're going to, you're going to get bucked out of that. I mean, they, they're like, what do you guys think about it? I'm like, that was the dumbest thing I've ever watched in my life. And people were like, and I'm like, dude, watching, having, seeing someone cry on demand was the most insane shit I've ever, like, why aren't you crying? And a guy was like, ah! I'm like, did you guys notice that? And a couple people actually left. But the rest of it were people like, why are you trying to dismiss this? Why are you? They start doing the same thing to me. And then the whole class now, after this, no one's ever brought this up before. After they see this shitty movie, now everyone's going like, yeah, this numbness and like quiet issue 
is something I've been thinking about for a long time. The people who don't speak up in this class, they're just exercising their white privilege to not speak on these things. So carry in the next. So then, oh. be, then we have a peaceful class. What? Maybe we forge a document. Yeah. And I try to become a speaker in your class. What do you mean? I'll, I'll go give your class a TED Talk on white fucking privilege and guilt. I'll be like, I'm a professor at UPenn. I'm going to come down here. I'll, I'll give you guys a little talk. Just get nuts in there. Dude, they'll look at your face and picture and deny. They're so racist there. They'll be like, what is he? Nope. Wrong. Sorry. You're Sam Hyde Drexel talk. Oh, that'd be so fucking Just lie funny. your way onto a TED Talk. Oh, dude. Fuck if you could me. if you could sneak into my school and do that, it would, it would, like people would fucking cry. They would cry if a... If a moderately political black person came in there, they would fucking cry. Who are these people? I mean, it's who are it, these students? So it's just it's just a, it's just a couple people who are like real into it. The rest of the people are quiet. They're obviously exercising their privilege to be silent because they're white. Because if you're white, you can be silent on these things. And it's your privilege. But for me, since I like actually, I like I just talk and share my like. Yesterday, I just was like, dude, I don't know why we have to learn through political propaganda. Why why we can't do these one to one on an individual basis? A girl got up and left the room. The one lady was like, someone attacked my family. It's white people doing this to Jewish people. I'm like, yeah, I sorry. I just know a lot. I happen to know a lot of people who aren't white who also aren't big fans of Jews. And it's like, <laughs> it's like this shit's like a worldwide thing across the board. It's like you guys keep trying to paint racism and evil as a strictly white phenomenon. It's like, dude, sorry. That's just not the fucking case. Yeah. I don't understand why this has to be explored through that lens. Especially yeah, we, we can still explore racism. Yes, that's all I'm saying. It just doesn't need to be like, hey, everyone, here's the scapegoat. I mean, you can Anytime even... Anytime you get the group thing together and be like, hey, we know, the, we know the problem of this issue that is universal. Yes. It's a very... Yeah, problematic, dude, it's the dangerous literal, thing. It's the problem. You guys just squeeze the bar of soap out of your hands and you're like, oh, here it is. And it's like, it's the same fucking thing. And I'm like, how do you guys, dude, regardless. So I'm in there. And so it's like, so if I offer my, I was like, dude, I just thought like, there's a class title multiculturalism that there would be just like an, a, an iota of open-mindedness for me to actually share how I feel about things. The lady goes, well, that's really just your privilege, assuming that there'd be a space for you in this class. So I'm like, all right. So if you don't talk, that's privilege. If you talk, that's privilege. What does that leave? Mindless. Who told you it was privilege to assume you'd have a, a space? White, a white lady. Just some How other. old is this fucking? They're all like 23, cut? dude. They're all 23, oh 24. Oh my goodness. And they all, it's like everyone, so but now. they hot as fuck. The silent, yeah, the silent people. How hot are they? Not real, dude. Not my cup of tea, to tell you the truth. They're just, Probably mine? Yeah, for sure. But they're like. How many have fat tits? Uh, does the J? Uh, do the Jays and the Jays have fat tits typically? No, I don't. I would no. I would not like. I don't. I don't really find. You're gonna need. Anyone, to, I'm gonna need you to send some pics. I don't have social media. I don't. Trust me. You wouldn't. You would. Uh, I don't even know their names. Honestly. I'd probably strangle them to death. You'd fight them, <laughs> dude. It's it just. It's dude. It's crazy. How nice would it be though? Like if if I could just sit in because I have nothing to lose. Like you can't. If you, you came can't as really a, come in and be like, you guys are fucking gay. Oh, I mean, yeah, like you'd be expelled for sure instantly. Yeah, even if I was, yeah, not even that. If I was like, like to just cause them to frenzy, just to go in there and be like, "Yo, you guys want to hear a joke?" Oh, I got to do just hit them with a racist joke. I got, I got like sideways. I mean, this is my bad, but like we're talking about euphoria, and what's the dude's name? Dominant Daddy's son, Nate. I was like, dude, Nate's the fucking man. Nate is the man. And they were like, "What the fuck?" And I'm like, when he came back into the party, it was like, I framed a dude. I beat up my girlfriend. Now I'm back. Yeah, man. I was like, yes, dude. And Brittany was like, it's fucked up. But yeah, so that That's alone, why it's funny. That alone, That's exactly. But that alone, well, people will be like, whoa, 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 chill. I I have a target on my head in this place, dude. There, there's going to be like I'm, you know, I would be surprised. I won't be surprised if I don't make it through the next year. It's funny. I was trying to think of a good racist joke that isn't. Totally unsayable. Like what? Well, do you, I don't know. Do, I'm thinking of jokes, and none of them are none of them dude, are even sayable on this. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> but dude, the uh, so that oh man, that's what you should have done. You should have raised your hand in the middle of the anti-Semitism thing and be like, "Hey guys, I just want to alleviate the stress here right now with a good joke. What's the difference between <laughs> Jews and Santa Claus? <laughs> Santa Claus goes down the chimney. Oh, dude, it would be it would be lights out. It would be lights out." It'd be chaos. Well, even dude, even like that's not a joke. I would say, for sure not. But my problem that's is like, well, my my problem is is like, dude, this this is a that's clear a bad joke I heard once. What? I mean, saying, I don't stand by that stuff. Saying racist that's jokes, junk. junk. That's dude, junk, dude. That's fucking. Junk. That's a bunch of junk that I don't fuck. Nate with. would do that. that piece Nate of would, shit, dude. dude. I hate that white piece <laughs> of shit, dude. I don't fuck with that junk. But dude, the 
it's literal indoctrination. It's like, all right, so if I, if, if I, if people are not allowed to be quiet, so you're not allowed to just withhold your opinion, you're not allowed to offer your opinion outside of what the accepted views of the group, it only leaves mindless conformity as an option in class. That's what it is. It, no, quite literally. And yeah. it's like, if you point it out, you get ostracized or you have people come up to you in a very, I always call it, I call the place the Kremlin. I'm like, yo, I'm fucking back in the Kremlin. People yeah. laugh at it, but people know they're like, this is fucking weird and fucked up. Dude. And it's not racist to be like, to reject a narrative that paints white people as a ubiquitous negative force in the world. That's a bad thing to teach people. Like, I don't understand how I have to Man, fucking... I'm so proud of your vocabulary. Thanks, bro. From fucking episode one of this till now, I'm your in grad vocabulary school, bro. is fucking insane. I'm in grad school, bro. Ubiquitous? Yeah, dude. Come on, man. Come on, baby. These were back when Monolithic, when baby? Woo! Wow. Woo! Wow. Yeah, yes. I was retarded when I started. <laughs> you were fucking retarded, and you only read these words. So you were I couldn't just say them, awesome. I know. Now I hear them. Fraught? That's a word. How well, fraught are you? It's fraught. Well, the situation's fraught. That's a word it's everyone uses. Fraught with tension. Well, it's kind of when people want to say something that right? like might Is that yeah, how you say it? Fraught, fraught or like just fraught with problems. They're like, well, yeah. the situation's kind of fraught. But dude, this is like scaling out. Like, there's a guy. Uh, My dick is fraught with fucking pubes right now, dude. <laughs> I haven't touched it in a while. I gotta fucking really? trim this. Boy. I ordered. Fraught. I ordered a trimmer. How fraught are you? How fraught are your pubes? How fraught is your pubes? I'm looking at. I'm like on a nice eighth, dude. That was something I thought about the other day of like how you were just a boy. You got pubes and just went down like a, you went into a wormhole of like it just didn't stop. Yeah, it still hasn't stopped. I know, which is fucking I got, nuts. I fucking I finally blacked out once and shaved my pubes. Did you for full, the first time when I was a young boy? Full baby. Yeah. Woke up the next day like what the fuck? Yeah. Because I didn't touch my pubes forever. Really? When I was younger. Yeah, I guess yeah, I like didn't. High school I didn't until like college. Like early, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Like high school, I went through full bush. Uh, maybe I had. Maybe I should. I in, in I college, know for a fact, I didn't touch them until my freshman year of college, and I just went full fucking bald. I did the same thing in the group shower in my dorm. Shaved an entire oh, the football bush, team, an entire bush of pubes, <laughs> in the oh. and then woke up the next morning with put my hand down my pants to touch my dick, and it was. Well, you can irritate like, it too. Nice, and like, of course it got very irritated. Yeah, you got you can. Uh... I think I used this fucking straight razor. Oh, dude, I was fucking hammered, bro. Did you ever slice your balls a little bit when you yeah. shave? That hurts, Nick like a mother... Yeah, that hurts like a bitch. Yeah, man, that uh, <laughs> dude, that shit. I'm telling you, it was the most. I, I have to meet with my teacher in person. Imagine walking into that bathroom in that dorm, We're seeing a bunch of pubes. Just seeing a bushel, dude. The floor was fraught with pubes. <laughs> Just walking in. Like, I mean, the, it, it was like the a Sunday morning. It was the janitor who saw it. No, no, no. This was a suite, so it was like me and like four other dudes. Oh, you weren't in the so locker like, room. It was a very small amount of people that shared this bathroom. Got you. I thought this was a football. Yeah. I thought you did a locker room bird shave. They ran into a full fucking. I thought you were like, any given Sunday. Everyone was in there getting hyped, and you're like, "Hold no, on, no, no. be out." Hold on, fucking... everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And another thing about that video, it's the same thing. It's that thought. It's like making someone cry. Like that's that's like you see the same thing when people catch the Holy Spirit in like some weird church. Where yeah. they're like, and now you have this, and everyone's like, Ugh. yeah, man. And it's the it's same. Like it's healing. the same thing. Well, John McWhorter, that's the dude I watch. He's on the Glenn Show a lot. Yeah, Gerby's likes him a lot. He talks about this whole thing, like, like anti-racism as a religion, and it's like it. It is. Yeah. It's like as soon as you bring up things, it's like talking to my mom about anything, and that's the young stuff where they talk about how once religion kind of fades away, that same energy center pours into somewhere else. And right now, these people are like religious zealots with this weird political stuff, and they only get. And that my whole point yesterday was like, your guys' news or your guys' information comes strictly through the media. Like you guys are being wholly propagandized. Like you yeah. don't you don't read like they'll critique like theorists and every fuck. It's so funny. Every critique, though, like Freud or anyone will just or Erickson. They're like, well, I mean, I don't know. I just think it's like a very like Western kind of view. That's and it's yeah. like it's, they haven't read any of the person's work whatsoever. Fires me up. And it's like. Dude, if I was in China right now and I was like, yeah, I hear what you guys are saying. It's kind of an Eastern take. They'd be like, yeah, dickhead. We're in fucking yeah, China. And they'd be like, all right, come outside. We're going to hit you with a <laughs> stick. We're going to hit you with a stick for a half hour. Yeah, and then you're going to go back in and just shut the fuck it's up. It's like, yeah, I see what you guys are saying with like your whole like 27 books you wrote and you kind of speak like seven different languages. I've never read any of your stuff, but I'm going to say like it's kind of Western. Yeah, it's probably pretty Western. It's kind of individualistic and a little bit problematic on that Very front. individualistic of you. But meanwhile, 
uh, here's my pronouns, and if you get them wrong, <laughs> I'm going to fucking cry. <laughs> Very individualistic. I'm more fucking Eastern where I'm just one with the community. Also, if you say my name wrong, I'll fucking spaz. <laughs> 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 the whole thing is a butt fuck, dude. It's insane. Dude, so now, and you and people say like, oh, you're being ridiculous. In West Philadelphia, around Clark Park, right? Yeah. And dude, I don't want to fight. I don't want to have to fucking. I don't want to be a political mouthpiece. I don't like that. I'm like any good black conservative. What happens? I end up getting pimped out by fucking angry white conservatives, and I don't want to fall in the Thomas. What do you hole. think this is? Exactly. What do you think dude. This podcast is. Yeah, I'm getting. I know. I'm an angry white conservative. I'm gonna get sucked into it. And a, I'm using my black conservative. I know, to, dude. To, you're speaking the truth, dude. I just sit back. Exactly. This is what happens. I just let it flow. This is what happens to all great black conservatives. We get pimped out by conservative think tanks yeah, by until we realize. Sassy daddies. Happened to Glenn Larry. Glenn Lowry ended up smoking crack, dude, and got disgraced from his fucking <laughs> dude. I love that. guy. That's a disgraceful move, though. It's well, it's funny because he'll introduce himself in the. I watch like his academic videos, and he'll be like in like a intellectual think tank, and he's like a uh, little something about me. Uh, I used to actually work for the GOP, got involved in a scandal, uh, and was removed. But now I'm a teacher. He's a teacher at Brown. He got caught smoking crack with, with hookers. Now he's a teacher at Brown. Dude, was that is that the guy that was in DC? No, that guy had to be a Democrat. Who? The mayor of D.C. who got caught smoking crack? No, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, La- yeah. La- that guy was a Democrat. Lowry is from D.C., but I think he's from D.C. I forget. No, he's from the south side of Chicago. But he, um, yeah, he's a fucking teacher at Brown. Dude, you listen to his podcast. Him and John McWhorter wrote a book on slurs. Dude, I have a clip of it's fucking harsh. Because he, he sounds, he's all a right. black dude. Well, all right. <laughs> he's a clip of it. This is him. From- <laughs> this is Matt McCusker. <laughs> I can't do Play it. Fuck it. It's fucking. Fuck it. It's not us. Well, this is a black guy's work. It is, it is funny because this dude's he's a linguist. He, because they were like trying to, fi- and if you watch the Glenn show, it's at Blogging Heads TV. They're trying to figure out where, they're, so he's like, you're a professor of the humanities. Like, actually, I'm like in the Slavic studies department. This guy is like a boss. Studying fucking, the Slavs? He's a boss linguist. Dude. He's writing a book. On the origin of the English language. Dude, wait a second. So this is a professor at Brown studying Slavs? No, no, no. This, the professor, he's a professor at Columbia. John McWhorter is a professor of is linguistics there, at Columbia. He's a white guy. Black dude. A black dude studying Slavs? Yeah, because he, wow. he's so that deep. That seems like a seat of privilege to be looking down upon the Slavic people from an Ivy League university and studying them. That's a very privileged job. McWhorter would, would not disagree. Well, McWhorter would just call you gay for being a, saying the word privilege. He, he doesn't, him and Lowry. But then me and the Slavs would fucking rise up and behead him. No, but he's the only person, he knows. He loves the Slavs. His his take on, his language stuff is so obscure. He's He was basically saying like, I can say whatever I want because like no one else knows the origins of like Slavic language. So I'm, I'm so needed in universities that like, what the fuck are people going to yeah. say? So he wrote a book on the like etymology of basically like prof like like bad words and like how like our curse words basically are just a reflection of our deepest fears yeah like Voldemort basically so whatever we're super like damn like hell was the scariest shit at one point so damn people are like whoa, whoa don't say that yeah like, fuck like the weird sex thing so now he said that obviously racial slurs are like the big slurs now but he wrote he wrote a book um, about like how where they came from how they originated. And I, I screen grabbed him talking about it through the podcast because he, was... he loves using he uses the terms and it sounds so fucking harsh when he says them. But he's a black dude and he's just like, oh, dude, it's so fucking funny. Dude. Slav was slave, right? Was That's it? what they think. I think Slav like See? came from. And now those taboos are about get ready, listeners. This can be hard. Get ready. You ready? It's about nigger, faggot, and cunt. That is our profanity to. <laughs> That's Whoa. how he's rocking. Is that the new Louis special? No, dude. That's <laughs> and, that, and it was like Glenn Lowry being like, "Well, I could see how you kind of take uh, like pride. Like you, you like to rib people by saying these words, the b word, bitch, the f word, and he'll just say all of them himself. So just two guys using all the slurs for like an hour and just being like, well, you know, we're using it in a strict scientific sense, and they're black dudes. Dude, I'm stuck on the Slavs right now. That's what? such a fucking historically, they just got fucking butt fucked for forever yeah like I, th- I could be wrong but i think i read somewhere that slavic like came from literally just slaves yeah because the roman empire and then the russians and that, like throughout history they've just literally been a land of people that were used by every empire around them probably like forever yeah the middle east would rise up grab them they don't talk about that bro the, well of course not when you talk about empires there's one empire bro they don't bring out if you bring what, out the romans you, not even though they only talk about the Romans, bro. They talk about just colonial forces in America. Like, if you bring okay. up like the, when the Middle East was wilding out, people are just kind of like, come on, dude. 
yeah. chill with that shit. It was just bizarre. It's so it's fucking what do you mean hilarious. When? How about today? Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> so it's, it's like, like, I mean, dude, and I, I, I hate. You should it. bring up the slave workers in uh, Qatar building the new World Cup stadiums. It's not true. Full Ob- slavery, obviously. Untrue. Full thousands of people dying. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And dude, oh Jesus Christ! So the uh, the thing we were watching uh, was on Al Jazeera. So it's sponsored by Qatar. Yeah. So like we're watching our our scholarly sources our propaganda from Qatar <laughs> and they're I'm like this is weird we're basing our things off of viral videos edited very specifically from a certain narrative that's not a very scholarly thing to do and people are like you by thinking of these things in like like logical terms is just offensive because you're denying my experience so it's like okay but even if everyone you know feels wow, dude, a certain I way, I can't even fucking begin to. It's insane. This bothers me, dude. And then, it, but my thing is like they're like, well, like someone from in, in this setting I'm in, your race carries power in terms of what you what you say, how much it matters. So like if a like if a black lady is like get mad and tell her feelings and like just freak out at me, it's taken as like, well, this has happened to my family, and everyone's like, well, see, and it's like, okay. If I had come from like a, a Kentucky coal mining town and I was like, this is how everyone I know thinks and believes, that doesn't make me right. You know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. so in these courses. I got in- booed in Canada when I said uh, everyone I grew up with or like where I'm from is Trump. Like everybody I know votes for Trump. Oh, yeah. They booed Did in you- Canada. And I was like, oh, booing where someone's from. That sounds like something a Trump supporter might do in your eyes, Ooh. right? And they were like, uh, uh, uh. And I was like, anyway, you guys are being fucking gay. <laughs> they all started laughing. And I was like, also Trump getting shot would be hilarious. Woo. And I was like, Whoa. yeah. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, it's, it's like if you, they're telling you. So in this class, you're not allowed to use, you have to suspend your logical faculties. You can't disagree. Faculties. Hell you, yeah, dude. I know, dude. You <laughs> can't be quiet. You can't disagree. And you can't think about things logically because that's offensive. It's literal political indoctrination, like to a T. Indoctrination. And imagine if you're 23, your whole it's just like your social world. I told the two of the people in my class, I'm like, I don't really give a fuck if anyone likes me. Like they're actually I'm friends with these two people. I'm like, I didn't really come here to like make friends. I'm 33, and they're like, you don't be our friends. I'm like, mm, you guys are my friends. Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm not your friend. I was like, if I was fucking 21 and I came here and like my girlfriend's sitting across from me. I would just button up and be like, uh, yeah, that's actually like totally how I feel about everything. Dude, the social pressures to put a fucking 18 year old in this is brainwashing. Cause it's like, what am I not going to get pussy? I'd be like, yeah, dude, sign me up for whatever fucking crazy shit. You yeah. Guys but wait about. for that swing back when those kids hit the real world and then are like, man, I was fucking gay back then. Yeah. But and a lot of them you, double you, down, dude. They, they double down dude right now in a, there's a, a I was gay. Of, I was in gay college. Was, yeah. I was. I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I was. I was fucking sick in college. I was too sick. I had to like wrangle it in. No, I did like in in high school. <laughs> I did like hold up bush signs in our parking lot. I was, like, <laughs> George w, I was like W. like W rules. Wait, hold yeah. up. You were. I had a bush. You were protesting Cheney. bush I was protesters in the parking lot. My friend had it. Stop. So I just kept holding it up because a bunch of our other classmates were upset. I thought you were protesting bush. You were like no, I was bush pro. rules. Yeah. Wow. I was holding it up in the parking lot being like, dude, W, four oh, more years. Oh, my God, dude. That's awesome. Well, uh, it was funny because I was talking to someone in class, and they were saying how like someone at their work is a black Muslim Trump supporter and how no one knows that, no one knows how to talk to him. And she's one-to-one we're talking. I'm like, yeah, that's there's like variation between the different yeah, races and how they do stuff. Exactly. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, no. And then we go back to class, and it just becomes a whole different mode of talking and relating. And it's like, it's dude, it's fucking crazy. It's insane. It's really bad, dude. Now they're do- there was a pizza place in West Philly where they're, and again, it's like, I don't really know the details, but basically the guy fired a black employee and a bunch of other people resigned and were like, this person's racist. This person's a gentrifier. Apparently this guy was born in Southwest Philly himself. He trains at an all black boxing gym where they call him White Snipes because he's so fast. They think he's Wesley Snipes. And apparently this guy's like a wild racist. Even he hires like an all black staff and stuff and he just... Fires people because when you're a restaurant, you have to fire people. You know, that. racists have had all black staffs before, right? Yeah, but I mean, like he, he's hiring. He's in his. I head, think that's how a racist would describe a plantation. Well, no, dude. It's like <laughs> what it's, my staff? It's it's, <laughs> it's just my staff. It's mixed. It's like he has like black people cooking here and there. He's got some people here. So it's like it's a mixed environment. He, got he, he set them to work. They yeah, he's, he's, he's putting them to work. He's from the neighborhood. He grew up in that neighborhood. He's putting them to work. Yeah. 
So gave white guy's jobs. putting the black people to work. Yeah, he gave him jobs. He had the audacity to fire a black person. Well, now, dude, they erected... Does he know his experience? No. Okay, so he can't fire him. Well, I mean, he grew up down the street from nope, the guy, but it's like... experience. <laughs> dude, so they, they put a chain in front of this bar. And oh, they're, they're whoa, 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 whoa. They're putting chains out? Yeah, they're blockading this guy's bar. Oh. Uh, being like, and of course, it's all photo opportunities. You have four white people being like, "We're protesting a black guy getting fired." Don't blah, blah, blah. here's my Facebook link and my Twitter. Blah, blah. It's like, dude, get out! It's dude, they're going, they're going to go business to business and start trying to oust business owners and be like, "Yeah, this person's racist. Get this business." I out only here. support Irish American businesses. Yeah, man, that's what you should. That's do. all I do. Yeah, that's what you should do. Every comedy show, I'm like, yo, first off, give it up for the staff. This is an all Irish American owned <laughs> business. <laughs> but these are these are mostly white people doing this. Yeah, of course. Which is like, dude, what and are you guys black doing? and you know, ladies with like sure dreads, sure. And that's the other thing the program doesn't that went to an Ivy League school. Yes, exactly. And now they're like, oh, okay, I can do usually light skin. A lot of Typically. the times, a lot of the times, typically. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's just what I see. Yeah, no, I hear that. Usually, I, a white dad is involved. I think that's a that's a hard double down too, because then it's like because you get a lot of flack if you're like super light skinned, you get a lot of flack from yeah. super black people. who are like you're not black. There's so usually then, a white like, parent involved. You get a degree and you learn all the history, and you're like, you guys want to learn some cool shit, and you're like, yeah. check this out. I'm a Black Panther now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Black Panthers are great, bro. My I mean, dad. look, <laughs> that's that was my rant about school. It was the weirdest shit. I have to go back tomorrow for my final class. I dude, I wrote a fucking. I have a little one page thing of all my points I want to get it across. I was going to do silent fucking protests. I'm like, I'm not talking. This is insane. But I'm like, you get Gandhi out, dude. You should hunger strike. Well, that's why I don't want, that's a privilege, dude. I'm, I'm at it. I'm at odds where I, if I'm quiet, that's privilege. If I, uh, expect to be able to dude. speak honestly, to speak honestly or something is a, is a privilege. I know it's you're crazy. not allowed to ever say it about being Irish, but your people come from a long line of, uh, I mean, dude, you know, rebelling. Dude, there was, there was people, and that's true. I, so you have it in you. I obviously, dude, I do. There was uh you can't sit back and let this happen. There was a lady, yesterday I, I kind of snapped. There it's was a, right. There was a lady yesterday who was like, someone threatened my mother because she was Jewish and he was a white guy, so I don't understand why you're trying to say that anti-Semitism isn't strictly a white problem. And I was like... Isn't strictly a white problem. Dude, I'm like... Do you want to? You guys want to start listing times people of certain colors did bad things to each other? Do you guys want to go down that rabbit hole? Yeah. Dude, they're all just like, eh. I was like, you want to go down that rabbit hole? Had a couple Glock nines to the face, dude. It's like, why don't you? It's like, do you guys are we gonna listing things people did by ethnicity that were bad to us? Is that a good fucking idea? And dude. as a Jewish person, it's like, why don't you go live in a Muslim country and pay an extra tax because of your religion? Yeah. And then probably get fucking attacked whenever the new regime takes over. Yeah, or and just finally be like, get your fucking head cut off. Or to be like this fucking conservative white Christian force. It's like, dude, go through the GOP and see how many high-ranking GOP members have dual citizenship to uh, Israel and the United States. So there's a lot of Jewish dudes in the GOP, dude. It's like they yeah. to act as if like all Jew like, and that's the thing. They're like Jewish people, black people, Latinos, and it's like, will you guys get the fuck out of here with that? Sorry, no. Like, yeah. no, no, get stop. That's so annoying to me. What is that the Jews are trying to be black? Like, well, now us as Jews have to all link, and it's like, dude, go check the fucking GO, go look at the GOP stats, dude, the high ranking GOP. It's like, get the fuck out of my face, man. Stop with that shit, dude. I, I, I just, I can't, dude. Can't even. It's like, you guys are white. Stop, tra you, you guys are white hey, guys. Kushner? Isn't fucking Trump's that's, brother-in-law a fucking... That's nothing, dude. Son-in-law. Yeah, it's, that, that's nothing. And Trump it's not even dude. like... Guys, do you. You guys are killing it, man. But don't... Look, don't be double-dipping, dude. You can't fucking yeah, yeah, play yeah, both yeah. sides of the coin. Don't Stop be oppressor that. and victim. Yeah, which is insane. That, that whole way of looking at the world is a fucking... But insane. yeah, once victim became currency, who do you think jumped all over that? Yeah, man. It's a, I'm, it's, I'm not saying who. It, you do the math. Dude, it's... <laughs> To watch, again, I'm watching it. This whole thing, it sucks because you, it's like, it just sucks having to deal with this stuff because it's like, it's so easily picked apart and like, oh my God, you think, and it's like, dude, I hear you. There's a ton of idiots on the other side of this. I know this, but they're also not in control of fucking institutions right now. Like if I were to have this, uh, a college where I just like blasted Fox News all day and I'm like, yo, check out Tucker on this issue. They would shut it down for, they'd be like, this is insane. What are you doing? That's my school just on the other side. It's like, crazy bro so yeah man i, I got it i'm, I'm, I'm no I'm, that's, I'm dumb, bro. that's fucking crazy man yo they're fuck i'm telling you they are fucking people up man people are getting brainwashed and people now are practicing it on businesses being like, not in our neighborhoods this is 
Clark Park is the front lines of gentrification, and it's like, no, first of all, no, it's not. Second, that's a whole weird concept in and of itself. It's like if a gentrification. If a, if a white guy goes. The whole thing, the white flight logic is like if a black person moves in my neighborhood, real estate drops. That's like the racist ideology behind that. But then on the reverse, it'd be like if white people move in, real estate rises. You're kind of affirming the racial, the negative racist take that like black people devalue. It's like, no, no, they don't. White people increase value. It's like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? It's crazy, dude. I mean, look, it's just a weird thing to think of it that way. Who controls real estate predominantly? Realtists. I was a realtist, dude. <laughs> yeah, you were a good realtist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, it's, dude, it's like, you know, whatever. The only thing that makes sense is the individual level. And it's like, if you say that now, that's a, that's a, you're accused of colorblind racism and you're like perpetuating white supremacy. It's like, good Jesus. Dude, I, I can't, dude. They're fucking tying me down at every fucking move. It's crazy. That's Basically. how they do it. Who are you talking about? Uh, the the leftists. <laughs> yeah. They control you by just being like, they have a, they have a card for everything you say. Yeah. Like yeah. You can hit them with, like you said, like you can hit them with logic and they'll just be like, well, you're racist. Yeah. Like that's it. Logic. You're using logic in a racial manner where you're dismissing people. The fact you're even thinking about this logically is the yeah. fact that you're cut off and cold and numb and therefore perpetuate it. Dude, it's, it's crazy, bro. It's fucking nuts. Anyway. That's not what I came to talk about, dude. Anyway. I could talk about that for, I was I'm basically with... just trying to get on the Glenn show, look, dude. dude. Look, dude. Talk Enough of this fucking we gotta talk mumbo business, jumbo, dude. dude. Let's, Let's talk, talk business. business. I was out getting fucked up. In Montreal with Blake Griffin, piss myself. Woo! Balled out, dude. What what else is there to say? I'm trying to think of all the friends we have now. Every friend you get, I have too. So I'm like, nice. Birdman's my friend now. Birdman's Blake Griffin's friend. my Blake friend Griffin's now. Your friend now. Who else do I have? Um, that's all that matters. I'm only stacking <laughs> sick basketball players. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that'd be sick if you became like a almost Kardashian level like becoming instead of like fucking you like being a friend being, of yours was like a watch, sick first a status off, symbol I'm kind pretty of. sure Blake Griffin wasn't really getting fucked up at all <laughs> oh. I just I'm, yeah that's like the Kardashian thing they, a cool NBA player just watches me black out <laughs> <laughs> that's like that uh, NBA player fucking a Kardashian. Tyga starts hanging out with me you. Me and Tyga are gonna be, be definitely become friends, dude. So no diggity, no what was doubt. what's Blake Griffin all about? Uh, Blake Griffin is all about, dude, he just loves comedy. Does he loves really? It. He saw my set. Future Shaq in the making? He could be a Shaq in the making. Yeah, he hangs, he did like the roast battle. Yeah. Did he really? Mm hmm How tall is he? Not that tall in oh. person, but I, yes, he is a giant. I was fucking, again, I was blacked out. I walked out. <laughs> uh, I was like shit faced. And this is a story reported to me. I don't know if this yeah. is true. Doesn't sound like something I would do. Could be a hit piece. Sure. This could be a hit piece for yeah. sure. A lot of yeah, there's a lot of people that would put out a hit piece around there. Yeah, man. it's all industry. Let me call. Let me say that the industry and the globalists were there. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not trying to dog whistle, but the entertainment industry. Was Al Jazeera there. Would disagree. Al Jazeera was there. <laughs> they were there. Uh, but no, I at the end of the night, I got fucking hammered after the set. At there. Yeah, after my first new faces in Montreal, I got fucking uh -huh. retarded retarded yeah. kid but you most of the people left mm -hmm. this is like 4 a.m like the place is emptying Damn. out place is emptying out a little every night was late so just like crawling that. with showbiz urchins at this point yeah the the bottom of the barrel but why would industry be up at four in the morning what the fuck are they doing this whole the whole thing in montreal is a party for industry it's a really? vacation for industry. okay yeah, yeah they're not even trying anymore to find new talent like it used to be like you go up if you smashed at new faces you left with like a tv deal yeah like every time mm-hmm uh, now it's just like, oh, you're all right. Well, they're being kind of like, again, they're kind of getting pushed out by the internet a little bit. Not so, yet, slowly. But, but yeah, not Schultz yet. was there. Andrew Schultz was there. And he's like, he's leading the charge on that. Really? Yeah, like pure fucking internet. So he's like, fuck everybody. And now he's selling out. Is everybody. he really? Yeah. Yeah, as soon as someone comes to you with a, ca a bunch of cash, you're like, no, no, no. I mean, selling out theaters. Oh, wow. Like selling out shows. They meant selling out. No, no, no. He's going full fucking independent internet. Instagram, all that. Like, he set the precedent for comics making short clips with, like, the subtitles. Really? You see it a lot on How Instagram. long ago did he do that? I don't know. He's the one who's really marketing off of that. Like, a year or two ago? Yeah. So I'm thinking of the man, the legendary Ski Carter, dude. And that's, they, that's been the game forever, man. For the last, like, five years. True. He's appropriator, dude, first of all. 
Do you know Andrew Schultz? No. <laughs> he, he talks like that. Does he really? <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of a wig. <laughs> Classic Did you ever wig, see though. Tom McDonald? New York wig, though. That really? Type, that type, like Rappaport wig. Yeah. Where it's like somehow that's acceptable. Oh, hey, uh, Where it's like, okay. Oh, yeah, that's my, like, other that's my other friend. Oh, yeah, Rappaport's boys with us. That's my other friend. Rappaport fucks with us. I'll see my friend Rappaport today. Our our squad right now is Blake Griffin, Birdman, and Rappaport. Sick. That's, that's a fucking need. powerful. That's, that's all we need, That's the holy trinity of fucking <laughs> wigs. So he. It's the wig party. So. So you so okay anyway Schultz Schultz oh yeah so viral sensation yeah Schultz and he's also the fucking man yeah like great everybody's cool yeah that's what the thing like I feel bad for shit talking everybody before I knew anyone you're a frustrated genius I was dude. Fra- I was just fraught with fucking tension yeah dude uh but <laughs> so this is late at this point this is the same night I pissed my pants so. yeah. You can imagine. You've yeah. seen me. Yeah. You've seen nights like this. For sure. Like Jerry from Saw you Healy, crashing Jerry the was there and he was like, this is the worst I've seen you since Philly's Funniest. Damn. He's like, this is the most fucked up I've seen you since then. Uh, he was standing there with a particular comedian's agents and managers in this hallway. Yeah. And I had just left the bathroom. I walked out of the bathroom, looked at everyone and said, what's up? faggots and then walked away and they were all like oh my god who was that guy and jerry said he started dying laughing oh and they're my like god. what's funny about that and he was like ah! <laughs> <laughs> just dying laughing anyway, yeah man i'm telling you it's a. Uh... it was a fun time up there yeah dude that's a that's a fucking blast but yeah everybody was fucking great i i just wonder well, not everybody there was some fucking pussies i mean dude the Fuck, there... i wish i knew this kid's name i would fucking name him he who? was a there was some fucking the lesser known people tended to be cunts. Oh yeah, throughout like course. this one kid that was a fucking Canadian new face. Fuck, I forget his name. I mean, I was telling Spud today. I'm like, like, never mind. It's sometimes it's like hanging out with like, like you, you'd be stoked to do that sometimes, and then like fifty percent of the people have the personality of like the worst manager you've ever had. Mm-hmm. Where it's just like, dude, you're a fucking psychopath. Like, please leave me alone. That's yeah. like a huge chunk, and it's like people who are super cool. And relax. It's like there's a lot, a lot of middle ground. Sure. It's like sociopath, sick dude. Yeah. And it's the like thing is, though, when you do well, the sociopaths are great to you. Very nice. So then it goes from like when you're, and I'm still new enough that I can see, I can, I'll be like, I'll be talking to Soder mm-hmm. and I'll be like, that guy sucks. Yeah. And he'll be like, really? I, I'm friends with him. And I'm like, dude, trust me, when he, when he doesn't know who you are, which he doesn't know who I am, yeah. he treats you like shit. Well, that's that's like that's like the typical narcissistic. And that's like the that's defining true. thing of it. Once you're once you're something they could use, it's called their light. They shine the light on you and make you feel like the best, most awesome person. Yeah. And as soon as you don't give them what they want, they just go like, "Fuck you, you fucking piece of shit." Because when they don't get it, they, a true narcissist has like a tiny little like sickly, disgusting child vi- image of themselves. And when you finally expose them, that's what they feel, and they're like, "Yeah," and they feel like total <laughs> shame. And they're like, "Yeah." So that's what happens. And if you shine, if you shine the light, no, I did the same thing. When we went over narcissism, I was like, oh, I'm a fucking narcissist. Fuck. <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's one no, of those. I stand my ground. I know where I'm at. For sure. But, it, but that's like when you meet people first yeah, off man. and they're just like, okay, dude. And it's now they're like showering you with praise. You do, and they, they see other people being like, oh man, you crushed. They're like, hey, hey what are you doing? Like, you want to hang out? And it's like, dude, so where weird, were dude. you? Yeah, dude. Where the fuck were you? What, are you nice all of a sudden? But that's what uh, that's what's great about Soder and Jay. Yeah. From day one. Dude, Jay From, came and did digital graffiti. Jay came and did digital graffiti. Way back when, dude. Dropped a hondo to the tip jar. Did we see that? Hmm. Oh, yeah, exactly. I did wonder. we see the tip jar of the famous comedian that I brought to the show? Yeah. Did we see that? Not a dime, bro. It? No, I, I forget. Not. Yeah, well, I forget. Some, for I don't, honestly, I don't. I can't even remember that far. Don't back. even need to think. About I have it. no idea. Yeah. We got. We got that's that was that's, that's standard here nor there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah. So yeah, everything went well. It was. So you pissed the bed. You called a comedian a faggot. The next night, I <laughs> slept. Yeah. A day of rest, dude. Okay. Like the Lord, I went. I did Soder's show. Fair to Midland. Okay. I had a pretty bad set. Then went back to the hotel, read a little bit, sure. read some fucking Blood Meridian. Dude, how far into that are you? Probably like 100 pages. Nice. It's sick. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. But went to bed, woke up early, hit the fucking... Or no, that day I hit a fucking jet boat out on the fucking... Oh, how was the, that? It was the coolest fucking thing in the world. So what, what, what is it? I it was going like to suck. A, it was like so a, fun. It was like a Florida, like big Bayou Billy propeller type thing? <clears throat> it was like a real flat because it can't be... It was like... 
ah, fuck, I don't know. It's like a real flat boat okay, because it can't it can't go into the water because it'll fucking wreck. So you're talking about Florida like pontoon, like a, pontoon like a wind type. powered yes. boat. Fuck, and it was awesome. so f- into the fucking crazy. He said it was the second biggest rapids in North America. Like it was what? nuts, dude. Nuts. It was so fun. So you just glossed over the rapids on like a fucking yeah, little like. Yeah, you would dip in because these rapids are giant fucking what holes. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. And you would dip in and a, wa- a wall, like 20 foot high wave would crash over the boat. It was fucking nuts. What the fuck? The boat filled up to like your waist with water. You're sitting in this. Oh, that's awesome. It was nuts. But. what I mean, whatever. Yeah, I'm just describing a fun vacation. There's not really anything Who cares, fun dude, about it. It's fucking this. awesome. Uh, so you pissed yourself. Piss myself. Piss the bed, which by the way, I haven't done that in a decade. That was a real sad moment. It's no big deal, man. It's one of those things, though, where if you if I do something good, a hangover is nothing. True. Like, if I have enough good going on, the anxiety and depression of a hangover is not there. Which is pretty insane. It's crazy. about it, yeah. Like, the time I woke... Like, Philly's Funniest, when I won that, uh-huh. I sat up in the middle... First off, on my mattress in West Philly, sat yeah. up, threw up all over the floor in my living room, in my yeah. bedroom, went back to sleep, slept like a baby. Woke up the next day just like... I'm the best. I'm, I can't believe it. Yeah, well... <laughs> With a fucking plastic container of puke next to my bed. It's pretty insane to think about it. Like, you could work your whole entire life and, like, you know, get your house, your necessities, or just have, like, a bunch of people be like... Ah! Your brain's only made to take so much, like... You can only yeah. get so much, like, serotonin happy feeling in your brain at once. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like whether you're doing, like, that or, like... Yeah, it's the same level. It's the same thing. Like, I talked to you about that... Uh, at one bad thing in my life, and then it felt the same as when I missed a homework assignment. Yeah, exactly. Like, it was the same level of, like, dread and despair. It was the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, That's, levels of awfulness are the same. Well, I think if you get, like, super, like, when well, people get geeked out about, like, I'm going to get, like, super rich and, like, I'll be happy, it just gives you access to novelty. So then you can, like, you can seek novel things and keep that buzz going, but then once it flatlines, you're just, like... Really, like I'm waking up with three chicks in my bed. It just becomes like that's your everyday thing, and it yeah. just it just you average out real quick again. Yeah, well, Unless, I was not waking up with three chicks. I was waking <laughs> I know, up with I, piss. I, know, I, know. <laughs> I walked out. So you're on level one, dude. You gotta wake up in a piss bed. Piss bed in the travel lodge in Montreal. That's why you get some chicks in the beds. So you make which one of you fucking bitches one pissed you all over? Dumb me? idiot squirted. You're which a squirter. <laughs> Must have been a squirter. <laughs> Imagine having a threesome with three chicks and afterwards being like. Oh, uh, did you guys come? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which one of you guys came? I couldn't imagine like th- just not pleasing three women at once and being like, "Oh man, is it pretty good for you guys?" Uh, Dude, imagine uh, like a three way with your penis. It's embarrassing, bro. Yeah, you brought, man. You're packing a penis to a three way. Yeah, that's an embarrassing Fuck. battle. Or like when you get done, you're with three women all looking at your flaccid dick. Yeah, that's... you got to be a real psycho to be like doing that regularly like a fucking rock star just being like all right i try to get into my tennis a lot i try to get in like a lot of tennis pride they should I, have a tennis pride parade I, I bet they do <laughs> no, they, i think it they definitely do. is they, like they do have a smallest dick contest somewhere i saw that that but, really bugged me out yeah i would not want to i don't understand what's the, pr- the price has to be like a hundred thousand dollars the prize should be a million dollars smallest <laughs> tennis in brooklyn or whatever it was you should be like all right give that guy a, you know but uh, no, the whole thing was sick. It was awesome. Yeah, just it was. I mean, it was just winning. Was it was great. just winning, winning. It was winning. It was awesome. Sick. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, man. There's there's nothing really to report on that. There's nothing bad. Nothing bad, other than <laughs> saying faggot once. That'll, well, that'll be an interesting thing to watch that play out in terms of like the, you know, the people I'm describing who I'm watching get kind of like indoctrinated. Then there's like. Like how that's going to affect on a consumer level because they're going to have this weird buying power where they're going to, in my opinion, we are seeing it already. We're seeing it already, but yeah. dude, give another couple, like give a whole generation of college of people coming through that. But I think, like, dude, Didn't I'm they watching. Run into this in the '60s of what? Of like universities dropping fucking hard Marxism. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, haven't they always? Well, they they did that, but now the it's scaled at a point where it's like the majority of to, now it, it was like they were doing it in the sixties, and people were like, "Oh my god, this is crazy!" And now that's the core curricula, at least in like humanities. And you know, I, I can only speak for social. Oh well, yeah, that that time core out, right? curricula. The kids that were hippies in college back then, yeah. are now the professors. Yes, and now they, and they control professors, it all. deans, and now they're shaping 
the the whole institution around these wild political theories, which is like, dude, this stuff's cool. To, you can read all this stuff. It's cool to learn, but you don't have to get all fucking gung-ho on this as like, this is my only shit. Like, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's also crazy, too. Like, I look up these professors. Dude, there's the one teacher who's writing about how they're a fucking communist and a Marxist. NYU professor. Simple Google search. Yeah. Makes $240,000 a year. I'm like, okay, so you're a communist professor making $240,000 a year. Doesn't sound like you're a communist professor. Mm. And then the lady who wrote The Knapsack of White Privilege, uh, I can't think of her name. Some like old lady with a, an Irish name. I can't think of it. Definitely has said the N word. I Googled her. May, she might have. I Absolutely. Googled her. What the fuck's her? Peggy McIntosh. I Googled just real quick. I'm like, oh. Because like one of the tenets of it was like, it was like, te- it was like 40 or, you know, like 20 things of like, I can be sure to arrange to be in the company of people my own race if I want most of the time, for most of the day. Like, you know, if, if you're black, can't do it, whatever. One of the tenants was like, uh, if I want a publisher for this piece on white privilege, I'm pretty sure I can find a publisher and get it published. I'm like, I'm like, that's, that's, and not everyone has access to a publisher. That's a weird thing to be like, yeah. well, if you're white, you can get anything you want published, which is like an insane thing to think. Googled her real quick. Comes from a town in New Jersey. Uh, one of the hundreds, hundred richest places in America to live. Her grade school now costs six, six to 12th grade costs $42,000 a year. This is an elite, dude. Yeah. And these elite people are forming these, like, what's the, like, core curricula for, like, what it is to be white. And it's like, no, you're a Harvard-educated elite from, like, a like an unbelievably rich town. And you're like, well, it's easy to be white. And it's like, yeah, if you're fucking that loaded, it's yeah. easier. But, like, the, the picture they paint of it is just what it's like to be a ge- have generational wealth. And it's like, again, you point this out and everyone's like... <laughs> I'm supposed to point out rich old white ladies, not you. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. fuck you, dude. Yeah, baby. Dude, when I start Googling the theorists and start showing how they're basically elites, so that's when like the people in there are just like, oh, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, we, baby. We don't like this at all. Yeah, man. You're going through a wild... It's funny how different our fucking weeks are well i dude i, like I you're I, doing battle on this i'm fighting people dude it's like i i don't i don't want people to act like this it's a it's literally a bad way to act and again it's like dude i so i've, I've asked every time in class i'm like do you guys have any sort of uh ideas on how to like because my whole thing is like people need to have like we need to like creative solutions not just like fucking people parroting propaganda that doesn't do anything i came up with the housing did i tell you about my housing program i came up with no bro it's it's like Absolutely, oh, it's oh my God, I can't even. I sorry, I'm like fucking coming thinking about it. So you know, I used to work for the program where I'd help people get housing. Yeah, and it was like you know we would give them the first six months of rent and then hook them up with a landlord who would just like totals. You a lot of times, not all the landlords. One of them was really cool. A lot of them were just these like scummy type dudes who were like slumlord types. So my idea was that and you know so the, and then every time a person would walk in. The organization would get two hundred dollars, no matter what occurred, if they got housing or not, and then they just hook you up with some like sketched out landlord who's going to put you in a shitty place in like a high heroin area. So high heroin area. That's very Western thinking of you. Excuse me. Sorry. If, if you're sorry. Eastern, that's just <laughs> just normal. another. That's just, just another day, dude. Unless uh, maybe the English opium dens are very Eastern and they're good. Well, the English, the English may have came in. Uh, they supplied, did, but boy, took True. off. They, they, they fucking enjoyed worked. it. <laughs> they enjoyed it. It fucking worked. Yeah. So then, so my thing would be an organization that buys housing. You'd have to get like a big grant. You buy housing. So say a house is forty thousand dollars, like a shell. Buy it, fix it up, put thirty, forty into it. Now you have a house for eighty thousand dollars. You totally disregard the market. I lo- I tr- stopped listening. You don't understand what I'm saying? I didn't listen. I wasn't listening to the forty thousand dollar house. Forty thousand in repairs. The organization now who is finding people housing doesn't go to landlords. They just build structures and price them as the physical thing that they are. So, like, if I build a house and it's physically worth eighty thousand dollars, the comparables might be like a hundred thousand. You totally get outside of the market. You just you rent someone a house that you built. They pay you rent for two years, and if they actually are able to pay the rent and they're like cool with it two years, you hit them with the title and you hold the organization holds the mortgage, and these people have access to home ownership. And then they can go and sell their house, and you know they'd have access to wealth. The thing would okay. be a nonprofit that would be sustainable. But you'd all, you would tack on a technical profit. You ta- you understand what I'm saying? Does this make sense? No, no, no. I, I just don't. What is this? It's, it would be it's a so this is in class when I tell people I'm like you guys have like no solutions to any of these problems. They talk about like housing insecurity, the wealth, the wealth, the racial wealth gap. It's like here's an idea here's that would concrete. actually work. It's a concrete sure. idea that doesn't rely on these weirdo neo-Marxist properties that can operate within a capitalistic framework 
and undercut and just totally disregard the market. This is like next level shit, dude. Yeah. I don't think you understand. It's like I'm telling you I don't. Where, no, where no, 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 no. You lost me at the beginning when I wasn't listening. Why? I don't know. Why are you just too wasn't. cool for school? I'm not too cool for school. What's bro. in your head right now? Nothing. Well, I'm going to dive in. I'm doing a deep dive. No, on no, you, no. Dude. What's in your head? Nothing's in my head. What's going on? Nothing. I know something. I'm just going telling on. you. I wasn't early on in the process of explaining of? this. What were you thinking of? I was. Uh, I looked at a text. <laughs> wow. Wow. Dude. I was looking at a text. Put it down, <laughs> dude. Just down. Hang up and drive, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you have this plan, and I get it. I understood the plan. Okay. The plan, you get it. Yes. Now Disregard I get it. Disregard the house, the speculative nature of the housing market. I wasn't regarding it to well, begin with. It's naturally, it's how you, you build a house, and it's like, it cost me this much. For some reason, since they built these weird space age looking structures, now this whole place is technically worth $300,000. Sure. So when people talk about the problem of gentrification, it's like basically poor people are placeholders for people with money to come in and be like, oh, there's shit. There's a shitty neighborhood there and there's one that's not that shitty so I can destroy that whole neighborhood and then build nicer stuff. But the neighborhood's really plagued with like real crime so it's like, you know, it's not like they're as evil as people say they are. Yeah. So it's like you would actually fix up housing without completely just like displacing people totally and then let people get access to their own source of wealth and home ownership. And that would probably help people take pride in like a fucked up shitty neighborhood since they actually now own the places and everything's kind of getting fixed up. Yes. That's all. Nobody loses nice. money. It's just an organization that, and this is the whole idea basically where it's like, there would be like a slight, um, so if a house was like 40, 40 bought, 40 to fix up, $80,000, you sell it for 90, the organization gets $10,000 to keep the organization going. And it's like, rather than trying to kill it on like an investor level, it's just like, how can I get a job where I'm just chilling? I don't want to like kill myself in a cubicle. So that's going I think going to be the switch from people and like the, just like, there's no reason for people to sit in boxes anymore all day. Where, like, you can start programs and do other businesses that, like, if you rather get out of the mentality of, like, I'm going to make as much money as humanly possible, like, in a total, like, zero-sum game where, like, I win, you lose. If they, people can figure out non-zero-sum games and play them, then, you know, it's like you just don't go for a ton of money. You just go for, you know, just enough to pay your bills and go on vacation and shit. Yeah. And everyone wins, dude. It's like, what the fuck? I, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, this is a grant, dude. You could write and do this as a program and, you know, get million-dollar grants. You should do it. I'm going to. Nice. I'm fully going to do this program once I get done school. It's so awesome. it's like, and Spud hit me with a good idea to build like, basically start out with condos. So you don't, people aren't in charge of like the repairs and everything. It's like, you buy a condo, it's a hundred grand. You're in, your mortgage on that is like 800 bucks versus paying like 1500 from like a shit fucking landlord. Landlord, yeah. And it's like, and then it's like, if you don't fuck up, if you fuck up, you're out. So this isn't babying anyone. If you fuck up, buy, foreclose, gone. New person goes in. But if people can do it, now you have a crib, you paid it off. Now, now when someone equity. fucks up, it's just Does like a mortgage. The, who owns the property then? So it's just like a bank. If you if if I'm in a house now, I have a mortgage on. If I slack, the yeah. But is your is your company or your? It would be the bank. It would also offer the mortgages. Okay. So would you say it's possible for like a corrupt shitty person to be like, hey, you fucked up? Yes. In towards the end of year two, being like, ah, you fucked up. Now it's mine. Yeah, but that's why I'd have to do it. And this program. That's why would, you're the one who has. To this do it. program would have to be wholly transparent because, dude, the, the possibility for corruption is so insane. When you step outside yeah. of the market and now you're dick, you're like being like, forget about all that extra money. The possible, I mean, dude, the schemes that could come out of that are just unreal. Isn't dude. that why, uh, like communism and socialism tend to fail a little but this isn't this isn't communism I this know, is like a suspension of capitalistic properties in like almost a vacuum and then you just step back if that makes yeah, sense but when the corruption takes place but it'd be it'd be hard to it would be hard to the corruption is going to take place yeah but how though it's like it would be hard to corrupt these things because it's like you have someone now who's they're just instead of paying rent they're paying you and then rather paying you're just acting as like a landlord kind of bank where like you're not yeah. just taking the money and being like yes thank you yes yes you're just going like, all right, I'm taking the money. You're living there. But then it's like, boom, it comes back to you in the form of home ownership and equity. And then you, you would get a salary. You know, they, they, a lot of the corruption from that comes from people getting like $200,000 salaries where like everything would be, all the fees would be upfront and transparent. I've said all the nonprofits should be like crystal clear, transparent because they are like, dude, the place I was at was a scam. It yeah. was a, literally you would walk, anyone who came in got, two, they, gave, they gave the organization 200 bucks and you didn't have to do anything. So we'd have yeah. guys walking in with like, Four hundred dollars a month to their name, and I'd be like, "Yeah, man, you can't. This program is not going to work for you." And like, well, they told me to keep coming in. I'm like, 
well, you're wasting your time, dude. But they have nothing to do because they're just on SSI. So they're like, half of them are like not smart enough to even be like, I'm getting fucked here. Yeah. I'd be like, no, this isn't good for you. You got to go to something else. And they'd just be like, well, they told me to come here. And I'm like, no, dude, like you're just getting fleeced. Yeah, and you're a dumb guy. Yeah, like they're wasting your... There's, there's a lot of them, bro. There's a lot of dumb guys. And like, Of course. If you can get into these weird I'm little, a dumb guy. Me, if someone dude. was like, you got to go to this building, I'd be like, all right, I'm in this building. But, but, and they'd be like, and I'd but, be but then there. they'd show up and be like, where's my house? I'm like, dude, you only have $400 a month. You can't have a house, Been man. there. <laughs> yeah, that, dude. Was, that was when I was eating good, dude. Yeah, dude. 400 a month. Are you Whew. kidding? Whew. That's dude. good eating. Dude, I'm sorry, That's bro. good beans. That's my rant, dude. I'm on. I'm on a whole new wave, dude. Where it's just Whew. like, uh, I mean, I'm. I'm trying to lead people towards the light, dude. There's the suicides on the rise. Suicide literally is is creeping up as like more Heard and more that. people are doing that. Heard that? It's like, bro. There's options, man. There's Other options. than suicide? No. I mean, if 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 <laughs> the if people could change their day to day, which is totally doable. It's like, yeah. None of us are starving to death. Like, ease up a little bit, make a little less money. Like, oh, I'm not dying. It's like, no, you're fine. Yeah, man. No, I tell, I tell, yeah, I couldn't agree more. So I'm, I'm just, dude, I, I would love for people to get out of their, like, yeah, if you're, it breaks if you're my unhappy heart, bro. and you're in a fucking monotonous life, which oh. most people are, yeah, dude, get the fuck out, Figure go it do out. something. Yeah, it sucks. Was when you're locked in, you're locked in, dude. And it's like, and I know what sucks about it is, like, we've had this conversation a bunch of times. Like, I got lucky that I had a dream that I wanted to do yeah. and I was just naturally good at. Yeah. So, like, working hard at it was easy. Because if I worked hard at something that I wasn't just naturally good at, I'd just quit. Sure. Uh, forever. That's always been the case. It's a good move, Like, actually. make a fucking dickhead out of the... Whatever it was, you know? Yeah, but it's it. a good move, because then otherwise you'd be in an office, and if you sw if you didn't be like, fuck this, this sucks, and if you're like, nah, man, you gotta d buckle down. I know True. this sucks now, but it's gonna pay off, and you do it for 20 more years, and you're like, ah, I got fucking hosed. Yeah. But there, there's some people, though, who will just show up to a spot, and they're like, this is sick, this is yeah. awesome. Dude, I watched a thing on... um. I actually talked about this in the stink tank. I watched a thing about the uh, it's a school of life video. Did you listen to that part? No, I didn't they're, get that. They part. were talking about this video like took the wind out of me, dude. And they're talking about people who there's like a twenty or thirty percent of people grow up and for some reason from like the, the way they're brought up get the message from their environment that like if they are anything less than spectacular, they're like worthless pieces of shit. So it's like to be like normal, quote unquote, to them is like an agonizing, slow, downward spiral. Yeah. Where like the majority of people don't think that way. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's no, like, I've, I've, that's how I've I am. Been... If I like sink into like complacent normal life, I'm like instant. So I'm like driving on the highway, like looking at the needle, like I'm fucking driving the river, dude. This yeah, sucks. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like people come predisposed where if they're just like sitting, just like eating, breathing, showing up and being like, hey, I'm here with my coworkers. It's like, that's the majority. That's like when I walk by and see Comcast people just, or like the people in the Comcast center with like business cash, like, hey, did you check out the new fucking honey grow? It's fucking awesome. I'm like looking at them like aliens, dude. But I'm sure that I roll into a place and they're like, yeah. Butterly was talking about my gear the other day. He's like, dude, you just wear like cut off cargo fucking sweatpants yeah. and shit. And I was like, yeah, bro. I've been talking about that since episode one. <laughs> yeah, dude, I wasn't aware that was a problem. Bro, I'm, I wear I'm wearing a Legion of Skank shirt, socks and sandals, and gym shorts. Yeah, but that's like that that's would that would Earth. devastate someone to walk outside like that. <laughs> yeah, that was just hilarious. Every once in a while, though, it's devastating. Every once in a while, I'll catch that full glance, the full mirror, yeah. like a reflection while I'm walking somewhere, and just be like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, I gotta, I, I'm about to go inside somewhere dressed like this. I'm coming off of like a week and a half uh, Avatar: The Last End, like I was like anime levels stoned for like a week and a half off edibles and then it, what, it culminated with the stink tank and now i'm like i'm back to reality now i like unplug from the matrix i've been like all right i gotta take a little you break sober here. today yeah bro I, like, I gotta take a little break bro i hit oh <gasps> big time dude i entered dude. the realm dude i entered your last night at in montreal <sighs> so ari shafir left the day before and just had a bag of mushrooms how much we thought we'd be talking i don't know a bag like that like an, an ounce of mushrooms like an eighth? Yeah, How I don't much know. Did you eat? I don't know. I ate like a third of a bag. This dude, I was fucking. You should eat like an eighth. It seems like you. I, like I ate enough that I was like, I've I've taken mushrooms and enjoyed myself. Sure. I took mushrooms and tripped my fucking dick off. Yeah. Like I was like, ah, uh, like I, dude, I got back to my. I left the party. I was at the fucking hotel bar where everyone hangs out afterwards, and I was just like, you told me you're out like chilling, and you excuse I'm, yourself. I was like, I'm high as fuck. I have to leave. I was like, I need to go away. How did everyone take that? They all enjoyed it. Yeah. They were very happy. Because yeah. they were like, where the fuck are you going, dude? I was like, I'm on drugs. 
I need to go away. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, I, yeah, dude, it was a wild. Well, you listen to the happy. Annihilation soundtrack. So I got up to the room, turned the lights off, dude. closed the blinds. So I'm in a pitch black, cold dude. hotel room in a nice king size. Fuck, it was so nice. Dude. I was laying in bed, like rolling around. I was like, this is so fucking nice. This is so nice. And I was like, dude. That Annihilation soundtrack so scary. So I put it on and just laid in bed just like, oh. I woke up. I would go in and out of like being awake and not. I woke up once with my arms laying on my back, arms straight in the air like a zombie. I woke up in the middle of the night like. You fell asleep on them? Dude, what time did you eat them? Midnight. Was alcohol involved? Not enough to knock me out. I was going. Gotcha. To, this was around like five where I'm going in and out of like. Am I asleep? Am I awake? It's like, wild. And at one point, and this is like, you know, this is, I think this is hack for being high. Sure. But while I was listening, I closed my eyes and it like was like a colorful, like kaleidoscope that was going with the music. Yeah, it's like, all, I could like, see, you know, it was a screensaver. It was nuts, dude. What? Dude. It was wild. And I put on today, I was like, I was just like, did you listen to stuff? Annihilation soundtrack? I listened soundtrack? to the Annihilation soundtrack and I was like, I started laughing so far. I was like, this dude. is the funniest thing to seek out and listen to while you're tripping. The it's highest the my headphones shit. could go listening to that, like, <laughs> <laughs> just rolling around your bed by yourself. Like, this is Desire. so nice. Well, it was nice, but I was also hitting levels of like, I was. I remember. I was staring at. Uh, We're also in a kind of a good place too. Like you've been oh, crushing all yeah, the I mean, eight incredible. mushrooms, and now it's like this wide open world. You're like, oh my god. It was. Yeah. I mean, coming off like I would say the best week of my life. Yeah. And uh, I was laying in bed, and I was just staring into the corner of the room where it was like complete blackness. Oh. Man. And I was just like, darkness consumes light. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, darkness is death. The blackness, but it's not malicious. Death and evil isn't malicious. We just call it evil. <laughs> like I was just having these thoughts that I was just like, I was like, dying isn't bad. Very Eastern, dude. It was, dude. It was. Oh my god! But then I switched to Western, so I was going to Eastern. I was like, dying's not bad. The the darkness consuming the light because the darkness and death isn't malicious. Sure. Like there's no agenda. Sure. It just kills. Yeah. And consumes. And I was like, but then that is evil. It is you malicious went, yeah, by you nature. Went Christian. By nature, the darkness is evil because it's consuming the light. Even if it's mali not malicious, it's doing what it's doing. It's still bad. Wow. I don't know. It was a yeah, wild, that's very Judeo-Christian. It was a real dude. Yeah, because so there's always those moments funny. like where you're high and you fully grasp a concept. Yes. Like I knew that going into that. The thing I just said wasn't a new revelation. Sure. But I was high enough to fully but grasp it. But you feel it, it exactly. You can totally understand it. Yeah, that, well that's the uh that was David Foster Wallace's big thing when he went to like rehab and he was like listening to all these stupid like one day at a time things and he's like there's you know you can hear him like that's stupid. When you when like and that's I think what like those kind of things yeah. do. Like it's like you take the most mundane thing and then you like feel it on this weird level where you're like oh my god it's yeah. so true it's yeah. weird dude it's a weird it's a whole different thing i was thinking about love and how like god so nice loving people yeah it's like i do love these people yeah yeah it was nice man. fantastic it was a really nice dude time. the fact that you broke away and went fucking just rogue is went so up to my dark fucking, fucking funny just a dark dude. cavern and explored the universe oh my god that's while so blasting the annihilation soundtrack <laughs> On a loop, like a 12 minute loop of just like, I was like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> people probably thought you were having a, an autistic fit. Oh dude. man, that's fantastic! Wild what time. a good fucking week! Best, like I said, probably the best week of my life. Damn, every day that's fucking every awesome. day was a sick fucking show. And that was the every last night, like, and you flew out of there. Yeah, drove the next morning. The old drive back from old Montreal to New York, nice seven hours. Oh, you drove up there? I flew up, but I knew I had a feeling I was going to get added to shows. Ah. Uh, so after my last new faces would have been when my flight was. Yeah. Which would have been like a day or two earlier than when I left. So then you flew. Okay. So then or I then just I was like, fuck. Because then I tried to buy a flight on Sunday and it was like $800. What wheel did you grab? Uh, uh, the backseat of a van with a lady and her mother. What? And they chatted the whole way. No radio. How'd you get that? Uh, I just ran into them. <laughs> You're like, hey. Yeah, they were they were part of the festival. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, I took some sleeping pills. Not crazy ones. Sure. Just like over the counter fucking like Tylenol Dude, PMs. Do you know the... Knocked out the whole way. Listen to the fucking stink tank. Dude, that was a fucking... <laughs> yeah, it was that funny, was a man. wild endeavor. Listen to the Patreon. Listen well, to I don't, the stink I don't, tank. Uh, 
I should have done like a preamble at first. I don't think people, some people didn't, I don't think realize that like how fucking high, how you guys fucking were. high we all were. Yeah. There was like multiple people. I'm not gonna air anyone out. Multiple people were on mushrooms. I mushrooms, was, by the way. Awesome. What's the holdup on mushrooms, I, dude? What I, is the possible repercussion? I don't understand. What is the downside of mushrooms? It's like, well, when I was nineteen, I, I was like trying to convince my friends to let me climb a water tower, but they told oh, me you not get to into do it. Stuff like that. But you know, if, if they had, if they figured that out, where like here's where you go do them, go do them here. I think people would be like, all right, this is cool. So you get to like that point where you're like, I should climb a water tower. I was nineteen, and I like, but True. it was, I I couldn't when I was when I was nineteen. I was like. The whole I was like, damn, because I so that's like a that's like a normal drunk idea. Yeah, that's and it was, an idea I would have now. But it drunk. was it was funny because they were like, well, you're going to get in trouble, and I was like, trouble <laughs> by who? <laughs> what do you mean by that, dude? What I is was like, trouble. They literally, I was like, I can't. But like, someone's going to like hold me somewhere. Yeah, I was they're like, going to put you in a cage. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what for climbing a water tower? Yeah, dude, it was it was like. But honestly, it's like that, that's like if you do that, my, the, the amount of people who will try to like jump out of a window versus like drunk drivers, it's very negligible, dude. Very negligible. Very negligible. Very negligible. So yeah, they're, they're, dude, that's coming through. I think twenty twenty twenty. I got some more with me right now. Do you really? I think I'm gonna get on the a bit of a shroom run here, dude. By I the was way, have just dipped, about that. Have not dipped since I told you I was gonna quit dipping. Wow. No dip. Wow. No dip. I was just the other over day over a week now. Really? I've been dipping. The last time I tried to quit was probably like two years ago, and the dude, the last like, the last like year, I've been dipping almost all day every day. Wow! Like at almost all, I dip every time we're on the podcast. I dip every podcast. Did somewhere. you think about dipping at all when you're on mushrooms? No. Okay. I mean, like, did, you, did the idea of dipping come? Was that apparently is like one of the best like nicotine? Uh, really? Yeah. I would just things. I would smoke cigarettes, and I got that gum. Yeah. But no so, dip. That's a fucking. That's yeah. a big one, dude. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, it still is. I was literally just driving back from New York to Philly right now. I was like, man, I'd love to stop and get some dip in one of these rest stops. I was just saying so to myself, I took a week off. I'm good. Nah, dude. <laughs> no, wait, how'd you talk yourself out of it? Uh, I threw in some gum. Good. I it, was just literally, yeah, dude. I was like, Shane has to start like, like once a month, just eating mushrooms or something. You'll, you'll dude, it'll take you to the next level. Uh, yeah, you're uh, you're in a spot now. If you go full Sergeant Pepper mode, dude, I'm telling, I'm promising you, <laughs> I'm promising you. If I release my first, my debut album is Sergeant Pepper, people are like, all right, well, this guy's retarded. <laughs> no, no, you gotta have a white album first. If you dude, start, I don't if, have any. If you start eating like, if you start eating a little bit of mushrooms like every couple days and going and doing, bro, I'm telling you, you're I have gonna sky I'm going rock. home. You're gonna skyrocket. I'm gonna take a nice break from all this gay shit. Yes. And go home for like four or five days. Taking Beezer to the fucking dirt track. We're going to go watch some good old fucking racing down at Williams Grove. By the way, if you're a Central PA boy, Williams Grove. Yeah, come on. Friday through, night, bro. Damn. Uh, I'll, I, I do have a show Thursday in Baltimore. Uh, sold out, though. Come on. You know me. No, obviously. I think the show sells out. Are you going down there regularly. in response to like the corruption and stuff? I'm there? going down there to tell them that uh, this place is a shithole. Trump's right. Maybe the Democrats running this place should fix it. Well, did you see the thing how Sanders said like kind of something similar? To yeah, that? Sanders said the exact same thing. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, honestly, that I think that was a uh, kind of like a purposeful move to like be like he's here's something they said. If you say it, they'll perceive it as racist. Yeah. Do that, and then everyone will freak out, and then they'll, you'll make them. Look you'll dumb. be able to be like, yeah, you guys said it. They yeah. should start doing that. I mean, I think there's people. Trust me, there are people oh, who yeah. are like there are people smart that are. Fair, this. You're dealing with like Jedi mind shit of people like of like manipulation and shit like dude these are not dumb these are not people just being like what's in the newspaper today oh wow look at this this is yeah. a good opportunity these guys are engineering it's shit. funny uh to hear people be like oh man trump's really pandering with this asap rocky thing it's like yeah yeah that's what they all do obviously <laughs> what do you think a politician does I know, they dude. pander i know you're you're gonna attack trump for pandering yeah eh. yeah well it's dude it, <laughs> That whole thing that that was funny. I mean, I guess he me. does he does pander fucking for sure. They, and he they, goes down there and he's like, "I love God." Yeah. Like, what's your favorite part? He's like, "Just the whole fucking thing." Yeah. God. Love the Bible. Christians. <laughs> Probably the whole Bible. Yeah. Obviously, dude. They're, oh, that's the whole game. And you now know, with again, that fucking Office Space Michael Bolton scene where they're like, "What's your favorite part?" I have his whole catalog. He's like, "The whole thing." Whole thing. I love I love all of his work. Old New Testament, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That that is so. It's that, like first one, second one. It is them. funny to shamelessly pander though and be like, We we have to get ASAP Rocky back here. We need ASAP. He's a fantastic artist. I love his music. Yeah. Uh, dude, I, I I can't even I can't take But here's the thing about this. What? And uh, if Trump pandering or however he does it lowers 
like fucking time in prison for weed charges, if he like starts releasing, you know, black guys that have been in jail for 50 years for weed. Yeah. Regardless of why he's doing it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You can look at it and be like, oh, he's fucking pandering with all these, you know, he's talking to Kanye West and Kim Kardashian about prison reformation. It's like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Who cares if all three of them are fucking retards, which probably kind of are. Sure. They're all, I mean, Kanye and actually you got to give Kim credit too. Kind of a fucking savant. Slut savant, dude. Absolute fucking whore savant. <laughs> yeah, it's kind Total, of. Total, the ultimate well, you, you whore. You know how she did the, uh, did her bar? Or, you know, you know, there's a loophole in, uh, in law that if you, you can skip, uh, law school. If you go, I think it's, I forget what it is. It's Florida and Vermont. Two sta- There's two states where you can just study for the bar and take it and then apprentice under a lawyer and skip law school altogether. Really? You can become a lawyer that way. Is yeah. Kim Kardashian a lawyer? I think she's going to try to become a lawyer through that loophole. <laughs> Which is sick. a sick way to absolute. It's slut, an old dude. school way to go. I Total mean, fucking slut. Imagine slut. she's apprenticing. I'd be like, yeah. What did you? Here, I'll sign. Yeah, sure. You're a anything lady. you want. Here you go. You win. Uh, yeah, man. Well, that's a weird thing too. With I, I can't. But again, as long as the result is exactly. Who cares, dude? People that get into personality politics are just smarter WWF fans. If you were invested <laughs> in a politician's personality, you're dumb. Well, or you're just unless it's Trump daddy, dude. <laughs> I mean, he's unless say, it's, it's the ultimate sassy. It's the same. Trump is just the Undertaker. True. You like fucking, you know, if you're like a super liberal, you kind of, I guess you like the Green Street Posse or whatever it is. True. It's like, what do you think the liberals? Would they're be? getting behind all these weird personalities. That'd be the corporation. That'd be the McMahon's, dude, for sure. Trump I've said is it before. Cold. I've said it before. I'll say it again, dude. If your revolution sponsored by major corporations, you maybe look into it a little bit. But it's like <laughs> Google it. Yeah, maybe Google. That's kind of weird, uh, dude. I Trump, can't, Trump's stone cold, dude. No, There's no doubt in my sure. mind. Donald Trump is Corey a stone Booker's cold the politician. Uh, Cory Booker's arguing for full. Cory Booker is nation of domination rock, <laughs> like back fucking real gay rock. <laughs> Cory Booker's uh, uh, arguing for federal Sanders legalization. Sanders is mankind, dude. Oh, Sanders dude. is mankind for sure, dude. Yeah. He's fucking grumpy ass. Dude. <laughs> he keeps losing, but it's everyone's like, hell yeah, that's our favorite. <laughs> he he loses. tries really hard. Yeah, the uh, Booker is coming. He's offer. He's arguing for full federal legalization and like wiping the slate clean on weed altogether. I think Trump's going to do that too. I think Trump's going to pull out a, at the last minute a full. I think twenty twenty. I'm, I'm. This is my prediction. Twenty twenty is going to be federal legalization. It's going to drop because right now in California, I don't know if you know if you're pl- like how fucked up the weed market is right now. California projected, I think, getting the only like, drugs I get are for free from fans. <laughs> well, the weed <laughs> that are handed to dude, me at shows. Yeah, you would. I guess you would. You would know. I'm, I'm out of that. California projected. I, it's either 500 million or a billion, a big number. Yeah. They ended up getting only like a hundred million dollars as, as from their taxable yeah. legal weed. So they were like, uh, "Fuck this!" So now they're putting all this pressure on like the illegal weed farms in California. So now apparently, like, they're, it's just like hard to get weed for people now because they're like setting up like there's roadblocks going. They're putting like they just like took a lot of that hundred million dollars and like militarized. A presence over weed growers to because they're about to go. I think they're going to go federal on it. So they're shutting down all the black market participants, and then they're going to go federal. Everything's taxed, and you know, blah 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 blah, which is hilarious because at the end of the day, all you have to do to compete with the government is plant a seed in the ground in your house. So it's like it is a fucking insane business model. It's a business model based on pure domination. When in reality, it's like we could. It, the price of it's strictly because someone will come fuck you up if you grow it. That's the only reason it's so expensive. Yeah. So it's like they're they're cracking down on all the Cal- it was the California weed growers were just the ones basically growing like eighty percent of the weed in the country because they yeah. were and you'd have like dude right now you have I saw the Netflix docs exactly you have yeah. Wash dude you have Washington next to Idaho and Idaho it's illegal Washington it's fully legal that's a, that's like dude you couldn't set up a better black market transaction than that yeah you can just drive across into Idaho that's like driving to Delaware and with leaving a state where weed's legal. Yeah. You would just crush it. You could just send it all out. But you it's know, like if Chipotle was illegal in Delaware. You could exactly, just go yeah, exactly. buy it right here, go dude. down there, sell it to those fucking retards. It's it's the dumbest. You want guac, dude? Come on. Yeah, it's like, come on, bro. That's a little extra. It's dude shining the light. It's like, a fucking guac, dude. Is that guac? <laughs> but yeah, man, so like that's, right, I think 2020, they're going to go full legalization, federal legalization. Instead of drug sniffing dogs, it's just fat dudes. <laughs> like some cops, like all right, hold on, or, or it's just a cop. I'm make the call. It's just a fat guy. <laughs> just gets a cop. Down. <laughs> <laughs> they Dude, walk in the trunk. The the uh, <laughs> smell. Of yes, I think. But Trump's whole thing is that like I have no problem with marijuana decriminalization, but it should be handled at a state level. So that's a that's a politicky answer to be like, we'll keep 
like raiding people and doing all this weird federal shit, but then like states can do it. it it's you know he's makes a big sense states' sense. rights guy. Yeah, well, on not he he isn't. I don't think he's anything. Exactly. He's, he's <laughs> Trump's just, obviously nothing, which is sick. when it comes to what he does and wants. Yeah. Other than just pure fucking domination, just crushing it and being personal there. dominate. Not even fucking. You know he doesn't. I guarantee he doesn't give a fuck about how much power the federal government has. He uh, only cares about his fucking power. Sure. Pure sassy. Well, I mean that's hundred percent. That's hundred percent. Yeah. But him, if he if he goes fuck it, I'm federally legalizing weed, bro. It's gonna be like. That's gonna be uh that'll be a big deal for him. I if wonder he does that. how much that'll fuck him though. With his base. Nah, he's pulling, man. A lot of these people don't care about this anymore. Because you can spin it so easy on that Christian base and being like, this is a plant from God. It's about time. Dude, they'll they'll snap it it. You could spin it. All you got to do is pay the preachers to push to like... And this is there's all they got to do is they take out a four year old epileptic girl and like and this plant that comes from God helps this girl I hear and you. these companies are trying to do they they can brainwash but those people of course into they can brainwash they them. Want. it would have to be quick though true it would have to be quick to get them to they this, have a whole this year would need no this would take a long time dude these PTSD are people that grew for up. the vets it's dude it's I hear you I hear you I understand the benefits yeah. but the people that are very pro weed aren't going to vote for Trump because he's legalizing weed. Now surprised. the people that are in his base, <laughs> You'd be surprised. I wouldn't be. The, I wouldn't but, be that surprised. I don't think it would be that great a number. People who are in his base. I think he would lose more from his base than gain more from fucking people that's those fucking dope smokers. Nah, dude. I mean, I think the trade off wouldn't be worth it. Well, if you really it, the, break the, it down for him, it might not be because every single liberal candidate is basically being like, we're legalizing weed, except for like obviously like Hill Joe, said. Joe Biden's fucking bitch ass is like, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm like a federal. Any politicians like we got to respect the federal mandate on weed. It's like, yeah, you're completely like, get the fuck out of my face. So, but I don't know. I also, again, I don't know why anyone who takes a two party system seriously is a fucking obvious fucking dunce. Yeah. So yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm just trying to live. That's why O'Connor is a fucking bitch. He loves a two party system. He just loves the Democrats. It's dude. It's unnecessary. You he don't need. Him, you don't need to. You don't need a two party system. The Republicans people to, are so fucking gay. Yeah, it's beyond belief. Like, like the like actual how the gay Republicans. the Republican Party is. Yeah, sucks. It's horrible. Like it, we people would talk shit on us for being like right wing. Yeah, dude, the Republican Party is the corniest group of dude. Well, I don't know. The left is pretty fucking corny. Anyone who gets Dems are pretty. Anyone fucking who's corny. like in order to understand what's going on around me, I need to filter it through a, one of two political parties. Yeah, is kind of a dunce. Yeah, welcome to hell. Idiot. It I, it's like on the left or the right. It's like that's that whole thing is like what what about like why is it only two dimensions and directions? Whoa, whoa, you know what I'm whoa, saying? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why why is why does it have to be perceived through fucking? What about up down, bro? Fucking what about diagonal lines, bro? What do you want to do, dude? People aren't ready for the future. I'm I'm fully fucking ready. I'm trying to bring people in. This is I mean. I'm trying to come out of a world that you I should start giving TED like talks Jesus. in like laser tag arenas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just standing up there and be like, "There's so many fucking dimensions." Dude. I'm high. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I got I got two shroom pills in my bag. Oh, so you have like micro doses? I got a little bag. Yeah, yeah, Fuck yeah. It. Dude, Shane, I'm telling you, you're. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna retreat to Mechanicsburg. Mm-hmm. One of those nights, I'm gonna enjoy those two capsules. Yeah, and just hang out. Dude, you know, relax. Be, I don't, be in my be in my home. I don't want to blow your mind, dude. But I'm gonna. I am three eye ravening. The fact that I'm gonna divine a, a prediction is that right now you're hot, you're blowing up. You haven't even unlocked your full potential yet. You understand what I'm saying? You fully haven't even come into your full voice yet, dude. Wait till you fully put all the parts together. Uh, again, it's it's gonna be unbelievable. Or I'm gonna OD. On what? Tobacco. Oh, no. <laughs> like, well, tobacco, yes. It. <laughs> you know. Well, you got white girl, bro. Stay away. Now, also, definitely, if you stay listen to away. this and you do bring me drugs to shows, don't bring Coke. Yeah, don't do that. Because you're going to catch me when I'm fucking shit-faced after a good show. It's kind of like, mean, yeah. I live forever. Bam. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away. Don't bring... You got to hire don't security. Bring, don't bring blow to shows. Hire security. It's not good. Also, what the fuck are you doing bringing Coke to a comedy uh, they show? They want to hang out. <laughs> they know I'm gonna hang out. With them. They're they treating you. That. They're treating you like a stripper. If they bring me, that's coke, how you. That's how you hang to, with a stripper hard. They bring me coke. They get to hang out. That's how that works. Yeah. Don't do it. That's don't bad. cheat the system. Yeah, don't do that. Just become my friend. Exactly, dude. You know, that's that's a. I it's funny. It's really funny. The world of coke freaks me out, man. It does freak me out. Like I got it. I, I dabbled into it. I fucking stuck my toe in the water. Happens. You know, like ten times this year. And. uh <laughs> 
dude. And it, not great. Especially with the fentanyl going around. Ten's it's too like, strong. It wasn't ten. Yeah. But what, dude. <laughs> yeah, I've loved you. ones that listen to this that are concerned. They about should, me. as they should be. No, no, no. I just, I don't want them to be alarmed. It's, I'm not, I'm not out doing fucking coke. I all just, the time. T- dude, to be, it's like twelve thirty. People are drinking, and it's like I need to extend this for six exactly. more hours. Like, no, go to bed, wake up, start again. You do not yeah. need to stay up all night and well, be all jammed up. It's, I hear you. I'm totally. I'm, so I'm Reagan. I'm like Reagan Bro. era against cocaine. I'm like you Nancy should Reagan. You should be. It is. It is fucking. And you. Uh, you don't even know what it's like. No, I never done. It's it. like full. Never like, done it. Uh, despair. Well, when if afterwards, <laughs> just like instantly, like we need more. Oh, dude. It's. It is fun as fuck while you're doing it. That's how it I works. I don't like it. Every t- person. I'm with I, you, man. Every person I've been around, a lot of people I knew when I was younger, like in high school, kind yeah. of got into it, and I like I, I, tried I watched it. it and was like, this not for me. Sucks. I tried it a couple times. Not really for me. Yeah. It's never. Really, yeah. Not for me. Suck now it, I'm shrooms, bro. We're gonna go shrooms. You. I'm telling you, no dip, straight shrooms, shrooms and natural light and Bud Light. Jesus, bro. The rise will be, you know, you don't even we'll know. Sing dude. about this. For you're, years. you're about to unlock. You're about to unlock the <laughs> full. Just become a fucking fat hippie, dude. <laughs> it's perfect, dude. <laughs> no, who hates are, it? You won't become a fat gay, dude. You won't become a fat hippie anyway, dude. Can I be a fucking right wing Trump sassy fucking shroom dog? You don't think Bannon does shrooms, dude? Ben definitely does shrooms. Of course he does. Wow, dude. trust me, dude. This it's like people people paint the hippies. The Vikings ate shrooms, dude. They weren't fucking hippies. True. Shrooms are just whatever you know. Whatever. If you're like stuck in the thing, we're like, oh, cool. I'm in fire. True. Fire. You do shrooms. You're I'm not a hippie fucking now. hippie. No, I hate fucking hippies, bro. Hippies are gay. Hippies are my natural enemy. Hippies are my enemy. SJWs are my enemy. Pretty much everyone's my enemy. True. I hear that. You know. Except our fucking family. Except our fuck- well, some of our family. That's another thing I want to talk about. A lot of fucking little sniveling dicks what, on the, the fucking Reddit. A lot oh. of fucking assholes. There's I, apparently a Reddit on pa- well, not a Reddit, but there's I didn't know this existed on Patreon. Comments? There's a whole no. There's a whole separate page where people can do like posts like Facebook. I didn't even know it was. It, it, yeah, it yeah, yeah. I get the notifications. See, I didn't. Even My know that email existed. is like yeah. I get the notifications for all that. I stay off that stuff now. Yeah, I, I try to. I mean, I still, you know, I, I'll i be on Reddit until someone says something that bothers the fuck out of me, and then I'll stop looking at it for like three days. Yeah. And then I'll go back. Well, there's some fucking... Oh, dude, I didn't tell you. I uh, What are they upset about? People yeah, they're fucking... People, there's just people... Who cares? People offer these like retarded fucking takes on stuff that's just like... Like there there was one dude... This was actually... This was on the Cub, Cub Town, the Cub Town subreddit. <laughs> The guy, they were talking about how we put out so much stuff on Patreon. And this one dude is like, yeah, but the podcast is going to fall apart because Shane's so successful and Matt's going to like not be able to handle that. And it's like, bro, my whole thing. What are you talking about? And dude, my, and it's like, to have, I'm like, fair, that's fair enough assumption. And then you watch people be like, say things like, I wouldn't be able to personally take that. I, I don't know how you would do that. And it's like, where are they saying this? On the, it's the one come town subreddit. And it's it's that 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 again that doesn't that doesn't bother me. I know this seems like uh, you know whatever, sour grape and whatever. But it's like they don't. Understand, my whole dude. philosophy is based against that. And then there's people like, well, if you do anything besides cloud, and again, it can get lost in tra- translation. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. And I will say this: if this was reversed, I wouldn't be doing great with that. Really? You from day one have never been a jealous cunt ever. And there's nothing I'm doing right now that you're jealous of. First off. I'm but, stoked. I just don't understand why you but can't just you've get never stoked. ever been I've never met somebody more and I've said this several times on this. I'm jealous of the way you are, can get stoked for other people. You have that level of like good. It's I awesome. don't I don't have that for the most part. I'm like, well, eat some more mushrooms. That's true though. <laughs> no, that's true. Like when Soder does well, I'm like fuck yeah. When you do well, I'm like fuck yeah. Well, once you get once good you get to see the, po- the Beezer fly, I love seeing O'Connor fail. <laughs> Nothing makes me happier than watching O'Connor fucking spiral. Well, dude, and this is the problem with this is my like thing I'm trying to drive home to pretty much everyone. It's like once you again, I'm totally stealing this from the video I watched. Once you sail past the meridians of your hopes and dreams, and you're like, all right, I'm just in my life, and like this is all it is. And you're like, this is actually kind of sick. It becomes so nice. You watch yeah. what people are doing. You're like, oh, that's fucking sick. I'm doing this. This is fucking fun. And the, the idea that I, I think the, like, since people don't have religion anymore, all that stuff, fame is one of those last transformative experiences people can tap into. 
and fully ride their meaning of life upon and yeah. to watch as if people used to watch like the Pope. I'm like, oh my God, you have access to God. What's that like? Yeah. That's one of the last ones left where you can like transform. I've seen famous, I've hung out with famous people and mm -hmm. it's not something I want. If, exactly. That's like, what happened dude, to me. When we fucking hung out with, when me and Soda went and hung out with Pete Davidson, mm -hmm. we're just in the fucking green room at Saturday Night Live. Place is empty. It's just us three smoking joints, mm -hmm. hanging out, watching fucking Game of Thrones and Pete's sick. fucking, it was fucking sick. Yeah. But then we're talking about it and Pete was like, yeah, I can't go outside anymore. Dude. And I was like, I was high and I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. I don't want anything to do with that. Isn't that fucking And then there's crazy? levels of like all these shitty people that are so fucking nice to you. Yeah. All of a sudden. And then it's like, oh, they're great. They're great. You don't even know people suck. And you become it's, well, it's wild, man. You get to a position where you become a commodity for other people to make money off of you and have you basically be a weird thing that they can profit off of. Meanwhile, yeah. not your rights are stripped away, but kind of are. Like you're put into this strange, weird, paranoid existence where you don't know who likes you and who doesn't like you. And people have fucking weird. Yeah, man. Yeah. I it's, don't know. It's well, and again, it's not like a totally bad thing. It's like it's not a bad thing in and of itself when people like I'm reading the people's like the way they're viewing this whole situation. And I'm like, damn, that's your guys' view of reality. That sucks. Yeah. Like if you, if you, I mean, again, but it does help from doing stand up and you meet people who are like super successful and like just miserable and shitty. And you're like, okay, well obviously there's something missing here yeah. that you need to kind of do first. And then you can kind of go off and, you know, you can still do your thing. I just, I want, what I want out of this is to be good at stand up. Yeah. I want to put something out that's fucking good. Yeah. That's it. I'm dude, the the fame weird stuff is weird. And, it's, it, dude, and it's I tight. feel I feel embarrassed talking about this now. I just did new faces. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not <laughs> No, but it's not Things it's, are good, but I, yeah, like, I but, don't want anyone to think I'm out here being like, well, now that I made it. No. Like, I don't want anyone to think anything like that. But it, but if you're doing stand up, that's a very when you hear people get something like, and that when they connect to industry, that's like a there's just like a whole Dante's Inferno level of other comedians just like bah! who are like will never connect to any so that in itself is a big like yeah a big point but yeah I, I know what you're saying it's not like you're claiming you're like fucking k heart but it's like still yeah, i put and to have people recognize you randomly it feels good i That's used to cool. i used to bring <laughs> i used to bring uh uh i would bring people on dates to this like one or two diners where i knew there was two dudes who like love the podcast and they'd come up like oh my god and i'm like oh dude oh thanks yeah, man, yeah, thanks. yeah. and it was like sick dude, move total fucking mind fuck you know but it's one of those things that I think uh, the average person doesn't have a really good grasp on, and they just look at it. They, it's like, dude, it's the stuff I talk about. They project this pure fantasy onto it, and it's like, yeah, sorry, bro. The only way the the podcast fails is I get worried about what we're saying, yeah. and yeah, but we can just become black conservatives and go on blogging exactly. And the the only way that happens is yeah. I'm not. I'm not worried about that happening, dude. But I am. I am wondering what's going to happen <laughs> with the whole thing of like the. I was just talking about this. And I forgot of like people wanting to consume content they think's authentic, and people just like being themselves and honest versus like this weird force of like stop. Like the to think about honestly, it's weird to think now the the forces of a uh, what the fuck is it? I can't. I can't think of this fucking word. Where you're like um, censorship. Or primarily right wing Christian ideals, like don't oh, put yeah. this on now. The censorship now the left, yeah. is now as the left, which is like is fucking weird. Yeah, we took the, the O'Connor hit that home early. Where Did he really? Like, it used to be like moms going to Walmart and being like, Eminem needs to have a fucking parental advisory sticker on it. Yeah. Now it's little kid, like young kids going to Walmart being like, this needs parental advisory. It's fucking racist. Like, yeah, like dude, it's fucking wild. Uh, with with our podcast, like, yeah, I don't want to fucking. This is too gay. I mean, it, I feel it, gay talking about it. Fair enough. To be honest, fair enough. I th I'm I'm curious to see how the industry is going to adapt amongst those weird. Uh, well, the industry is first off. I know what you're saying. Starting you're to adapt a little. Obviously, if they're letting me be on things. True. Like that's a good sign. Yeah. And like we we we're doing tires. I think is going to get picked up by something. I have no idea. Sick. Don't be fucking gay, everybody. Yeah. But like. People are interested in it, and yeah. it's like things are, you know, yeah. If you're if you if you make something good, and the market will justify it, true. So and then look at fucking what Schultz is doing, like he's he's making his own thing, putting it online. Yeah, like, look what Louis did with Louis can Louis could make a special today and put it online. People will buy it, and I'd fucking buy it. Oh my god, yeah. So I mean, 
the industry does face possibly being obsolete if it doesn't adjust. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. I, I think about that all the time. I'm like, dude, yeah. I'm going to be sitting somewhere one day and someone's going to be like, play. And it's just going to be like, oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, God. oh, shit. Hey, yeah. Yeah. But I'm already my, there, dude. I'm so like <laughs> everything we've the, – the, the two years where I was in Philly and fucking miserable about stand-up. Yeah. I was talking mad shit because I was like, first off, I'm never going to meet any of these people. Yeah, I'm never going to need to worry about the industry. I'm never going to need to – be careful about what I say. Yeah. There's one where I'm like hammered and I'm like, I could beat every black lady in jeopardy. <laughs> Me versus every black lady in jeopardy. I'd win. I'd win. Now I'm listening to that. Like, Ooh, ah, ah, fuck. You know what? I, you know what I, <laughs> I came up with yesterday? It was funny. I was in class talking to someone, which is hilarious. I stand by that. It's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> the, I was talking about yesterday. Someone was like, yeah, like I watched these movies and like, they were saying how like some of the humor and it's like kind of problematic. And I'm like, dude, your sense of humor is like your sexuality. You're not you're not in control of what you find funny. That's like being attracted to a man. If you're mm. attracted kind of like to dark humor, that's mm. kind of like what's labeled offensive. It's similar to a sexuality, to where it's like you don't choose to be that way. It's that's just the stuff that brings happens to that's bring what, up yeah, a visceral that's a, reaction. That's what you. you grew into throughout your life. That's just what that's just your nature. It's True. Like, you know, if you're attracted to, you know, young kids. <laughs> <laughs> that can happen naturally you know you know child comedy porn somebody was like you need to stop making all those fucking kids you need to stop joking about fucking kids that much yeah because people are gonna start thinking you want to fuck kids i was like chill, chill the chill, island's chill, closed chill, bro. bro island got shut down island shut down so. i wasn't good enough back then the comics the comics on that list i didn't make it <laughs> uh yeah this isn't i feel ashamed why discussing any of this why this is gay it's not gay, dude. Shit's gay, bro. It's not gay. So your, ner your nervous gay, system bro. goes from like ping to like gay. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if it. I say any, yeah. Let it go, dude. Anyone who thinks you're gay for talking about the major things going on in your life is a dork. Leave it alone. It's fine. True. Thanks. It's fine. Thanks. Let that, you gotta let all that go, dude. That's bullshit. You're yeah. doing you. You're not beholden to anyone. They can suck your dick. People need to get on their own wave and stop trying to like vampirically jump onto things. I mean, vampirically? Yeah. Dude, you are a guy. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Fired up. I'm like, uh, I, I'm on like three hours of sleep. I'm full. Really? Yeah. I also didn't sleep much. Dude, I didn't tell you. I followed a fucking crazy guy around my neighborhood. The guy with the gun? No, no. That was, that was on Spud's <laughs> Every Different time you were bird dogging a crazy guy? I, I opened my, so I opened my, I come outside the other day. I opened my door and, uh, there's a guy, there's this dude who's just like all like scraggly just standing outside my house and my neighbor's outside being like, yo, dude, fucking get the fuck out of here. Blah, 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 blah. He's getting all mad. And apparently this guy was just randomly ringing doorbells and trying to just like push his way. And once you'd open the door, he tried to push his way into your house. So you he told me about this guy. He tried to force yes. entry into my neighbor's house. Dude, it was yes. the fucking funniest thing. He comes in. He fucking Did he explain why he was doing that? Did anybody couldn't. ask him? So, dude, so I like, he, he tries to push his way into my neighbor's house. My neighbor's like, come on, man, get the fuck off me. He would just ring the doorbells. And I'm like, well, relax. It's all right. He's, my neighbor's like, not fucking all right. I'm like, take it easy. This guy's fucking out of his mind. I'm like, dude, what do, what are you doing? He had like you a talk hospital to him? band. Yeah, like he has a hospital band on. He's like, 19th Street? And I was like, you're close to 19th Street. Yeah, is that what you're looking for? He's like, 19th Street? So I'm like, oh, I'm boy. walking my dogs. So I'm like, yeah, dude, it's up this way. Come on. So he started, he started walking up there. And the whole time, he's, like, looking back at my dogs and kind of running. So I, like, I let him go. I'm he's like, running? He started, like, taking off. He would get real skittish around my dogs. So he fucking, like, oh his, I looked at his God. hospital bracelet. said unknown. Dude was pure unknown soldier. He was an alien, dude. He might have been from the future. Yo, this guy looked like a time future. traveler, bro. All he could say was 19th Street. And he was just walking up and down. And he would get, like, this. He would get, like, up in people's faces and talk to them. This guy fucking stunk. Dude, he, he was from the future. So I start tailing him. I'm like, I gotta make sure. I gotta see where the fuck this guy's going because he's gonna try to get in someone's house, and he's either gonna like gonna get shot, push, get shot, or push into like a, a mom holding their kid, and like you know, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who the fuck knows? Nothing good's gonna happen. Now I feel responsible. He's not gonna go in and fucking clean someone's house. I felt responsible for this he guy. Might if he was on meth. Yeah, this I don't know what the fuck this. This guy was purely shot out. He could have broke in and sucked someone's dick. Well, I, he I might have been able well. to get my dick sucked from this guy. But in my head, I'm like, dude, I feel like I can't just unleash this guy knowing that he, and I saw, I was watching him try to get into other houses. He'd ring doorbells, ring yeah. doorbells. So I'm just like tailing him. Like, dude, I call the cops. I'm like, you guys have to come get this guy. Someone's going to kill this fucking dude. Yeah. So he's like, so dude, they don't, they, first of all, they don't ever show up at all to anything. So like, I'm like, whatever. The police? I call them, dude, 30 minutes. They're like, you're where, not a fan of the police. Where is he? They're fucking lazy, dude. It's like, the I'm. Police are lazy? The, the laziest, dude. I've said it before. They're like union carpenters with guns. They're the laziest <laughs> motherfuckers. They're like, yo, 
How about those fucking? I'm going. I'm, I'm Go sorry ahead, to please. interrupt, but Jump boy, in. those TikToks are just fucking terrifying, bro. Every single cop or military member that made a fucking TikTok should definitely be fucking removed from that. Yeah. None of those people should have a gun. No, dude. You are fucking retarded. If you're on there being like, you, I used to get bullied. Look how fucking jacked and gun owning I am right now. It's like, dude, get him the fuck get out. Get him of out. Here. He's going to execute a family. Well, you know, the, the police Iraq. monitor, like, whoever's a felon, they'll monitor their social media in the area. Those cops, social, well, apparently the cops got in trouble. The Philly cops, a lot of them just got sent to death duty because they went back in their Facebook and they were writing racist shit when Obama was in. So they just did a big sweep <laughs> of the Philadelphia Police Department. <laughs> oh, that'd a be bunch the whole of fucking <laughs> squad. <laughs> In 08? A lot of them. Yeah, they, they went back years in. There was like, you know, there was some fucking, there were some people that got Man. sent on the oh, desk fuck, duty. Fuck, go fuck, ahead, fuck. please. Go ahead. Bro, last chance you. Yes. Did you watch it? No. Not at all. See it, no. all right, the end of last chance you. Yeah. So their head coach is this wigger from Compton. Mm -hmm. he, they're in Independence, Kansas. He's got a team of some of the best players in the country, but they are fucking fully retarded. Yeah. Whole squad. There's no help from the coaches. Everybody's fucking retarded. Mm -hmm. This is this is the fucking making a murder of a fucking community college in Indiana <laughs> or in Kansas, and uh, so at the very end, did I say this already? No. You, at the you, very end, it goes through everybody's like this person went on to play at Western Kentucky. Like it shows their picture, mm -hmm. and then underneath it tells them what happened. And then there's a like epilogue, yeah, where it's like, and the head coach gets fired because of this, and it cuts to a news story, a local news story that's like. Uh, Independence Kansas coach is in hot water after uh, a tweet from a German student show reveals this, it, you know, this was his tweet. And it was like, you German fuck. I am your new Hitler. <laughs> it was just like, what a great ending to a series. I watched this series for like eight hours. And I'm like, you know what? These guys aren't so bad. And then it ends with a coach getting fired for being like, I am Hitler. <laughs> it's like, oh, yes. my God. What a, so if you get a chance to watch Last Chance You. I mean, dude, I mean, I don't mean I. I did spoil the incredible twist. That's still hilarious. What a great twist! I'm your Hitler, and the German. Well, there's people like the exchange saying, student was like, I, I come to America for fun to play the football because I love the game, and then uh, Coach Brown he say uh, he is Hitler, and I'm here to show the world that I will not stand for this. <laughs> it's like yes, dude, <laughs> destroy him. Damn, dude, took that guy down. Well, dude, I saw a thing of uh, <laughs> they treated him like shit from day one. This, and the, you know what's nice. Netflix, like it's like it's like if you watch it again, knowing that that's the ending, it's hilarious. That's because they treat him like shit throughout, and he just butt. They, he's people. he was a kid from Germany who moved to a fucking community college in Kansas yeah. because he wanted to play football, and they redshirted him and made him the ref during practice. So he's like carrying around footballs, and they're like, "Move your fucking German ass, you fucking pussy!" Like, holy throughout shit! Throughout the season, they're mean to this kid. He never played. You see him in the background lurking around, like he's going to be the one who murders the coach. It's great. Oh, so he, didn't, he didn't even really play. Didn't even play a fucking. He didn't put a pad on. And he just absolutely they gave him a Foot Locker jersey and made him c c like clean the field. Was he any good at football? I doubt it. He's a fucking German Probably, kid. Yeah, that's true. But he, like, at one point he gets an award. At the beginning of the season, he gets an award, and the, the head coach is like, most of y'all motherfuckers don't know this kid. Uh, I don't even know his fucking name, but he's the one. He's being a fucking ref for us. So, you know, clap it up for uh, – what's your fucking name? All right, oh, clap it up for him. Fuck, Thanks. Man. Sit the fuck down, motherfucker. And it's like, yo, that kid's going to end you, bro. And, Watch then he how you, did. and then he's like – the reason he was yelling at the kid was because he was making the German kid put up posters of lions in his office. He was like, where the fuck are those posters? He, this is the dumbest the fucking up? dude. He, yeah, he was late to put the posters up. So he was of like, lions? where the fuck are you? It was like courage. If you have the strength. It was <laughs> like uh, an army of lions led by a sheep is not as good as a army of sheep led by a lion. This is the head coach. Being like, you guys are obviously sheep and I'm a lion. I'm a lion, dude. I'm the man. He is the, fuck. this coach is the biggest fucking retard. I thought Buddy was. Oh. Buddy was the last coach, which was an obese dude from Mississippi. That was just hilarious. I mean, you that imagine guy, the crew filming the whole time. Oh like, my god! <clears throat> Every day they must be like, "Holy shit, this guy's an idiot." God, the, damn. You, this dude from Compton is the best guy ever. Oh. You need to watch this. Guy. I've heard. Yeah, I've heard. You told Bro. me about him. He would seem like the last year. Man. I was stoked on this guy, Ultimate Wigger, and it, but last year the team was good. This year the team fucking goes like one and nine. Was it the same he coach? Sucked. Different coach. Same coach. So he so ended the up the first two seasons was this fat dude from Mississippi. Gotcha. This year, the last two seasons have been Independence, Kansas, and it's been a dude from a, Bompton. A, a dude from Bompton. 
And the, every pregame speech, it's just that. He gets up. He's like, yo, I'm fucking from Compton, dude. Let's go. I'm and Hitler. all the players are like, all right. <laughs> it's, yo. <gasps> Last chance you. I mean, the fact that he gets nailed for texting, I am Hitler. To a German, too. To a German. If he had done it to a Jew, it would have been a lot more like controversial. I am your new Hitler. I mean, I guess And the claiming... German student gave it to the... It's so Although, funny. to be fair, it's like Hitler did make Germans kill Jews. So apparently he's like, look, you better hang up these posters or I'm going to make you systematically murder True. millions of Jewish but people. But if you knew the head <laughs> coach... I'm a fucking lion, If dude. you knew the head coach, you would know he wasn't thinking that far ahead. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah this guy is. <laughs> he was just trying to drive a point home. Awesome. He's got a book out right now. I might get it. What's it called? I Am Hitler? It's, yeah, <laughs> dude, it's, it's it, This guy... Oh, man. Sad dude. life, man. Yeah, man. He's talking to the players. He's like, yo, after this game, we're going to fuck them up, and now I'm going to go get some pussy. I'm getting pussy tonight. Let's go. Dude, I, did you see the... There was an interview with Gavin McGinnis. Or he Gavin? Now he's... Dude, he's not doing good. Gavin McGinnis, there's an interview where he's just like, this is my life now. I've been stripped of everything. And I just sit in a cabin. I just watch Tucker Carlson and drink whiskey. And, like, it's really fucking sad, man. I don't think I got a fair shake. But, like, now I've just been personified as, like, this really evil person. Dude, he got – it's like – I mean, I've never been real big on fucking uh, Gavin McGinnis. You oh, watch Gavin? his life and you're like – because I'm in my head. I'm like, we're ripping online. This is fun. Say whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. we want. And I'm watching this guy like, yeah, they kind of portrayed me as, like, being a Nazi. And now, like – I don't I lost know. Everything. I got cut out of my advertising firm. I started. Shane was going to bring me back to like Vice, but like that kind of fell through. And uh, yeah, man, it's like I don't know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> I oh. was like, damn, dude. You just got to go full. I mean, yeah, he, the guy definitely still has money. I would assume. I mean, and he's still technically creating content. This might just be dark. Gavin Gavin McGinnis, dark. He's like glasses he's in a in lot. Sad time. He's like glasses in a log cabin with like a perfectly manicured beard, drinking like a high, like, drinking like whiskey, being like. This is the time I drink whiskey and watch Tucker late at night. It's it, all he it. needs to get into public speaking for money. Obviously, yeah, that'd be super so like easy. Just make appearances. You can also write a book. Go you the get... screech route. Yo, you don't, see, you don't see fucking screech belly aching. <sighs> screech went out on the road, dude. Five G's in appearance, bro. Screech isn't belly aching. Dennis uh, Rodman was doing fucking appearances in like Harrisburg before he fucking went to North Korea. Yeah, dude. They, you find a way, dude. He can go. Maybe dude. you got to be dumb enough to just be like, fuck it. I'll do it. If you're smart and get stripped of everything, I'm sure it hurts. Yeah, that's true. You're a true. fucking moron, dude. Well, he also, like I said, he's like, I started an ad agency and they kind of like took it from me. <laughs> like, that sucks. Yes, and especially because Gavin was kind of falsely, a lot of it was false. Was it really? Accusations about him. Yeah, like, well, that's, the, that's a cautionary that tale. About the Proud Boys and stuff. Like, if you do any research really into the Proud Boys, it's yeah. like, all right, this is this is overblown. Yeah. This is incredibly well, that was, overblown. That was like a Reddit comment section brought to life. And everyone's yeah. like, woo, we're hanging out now. And it's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, again, though, if you're in a position where you feel like you have a bunch of people who might be perceived as Nazis around you, like in droves, it's like, yeah. he distanced himself again, real late. Think of our listeners. I know. If if people started calling Nazis. Chat Nation fucking Nazis. Yeah. Also, we should not have a name for our group. <laughs> Too late. That's step one. <laughs> Too late. Step yeah, one true. of becoming Nazis true. is <laughs> having a name for your followers. That's true. Or, well, we go nameless. True. These are the unnamed masses, dude. Yeah, dude. Who is it? No one even knows no who's one, listening. Dude, they, our listeners lurk in the shadows, dude. It's They're every, ashamed to tell people they listen to this. For sure. Which they're, is funny. They're at work right now just like... <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely like There's a, a, fat a Russian black lady in the cubicle over. Like, what are you listening to? It's like nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> oh, absolutely nothing. So get caught watching porn. Yeah, this is definitely. We'll, we'll definitely have like two like heavily mustached, like rubber booted men come in here and shoot us soon. <laughs> <laughs> once once they take over all the uh, white pizza places in West Philadelphia, we're next. They need to lock that down. Jesus Christ, the dumbest fucking thing. Oh, dude. So I fucking so I'm tailing this guy. I'm tailing a crazy guy with my yeah. two dogs. Oh fuck. What? I was supposed to meet. Uh, Oh, you're supposed to go to a... Uh, How long have we been on? We've been on the air for a while. We're around in two hours. All right. Um, I'll get out of here, dude. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, because I haven't... Let me see what these guys are saying. Go, go ahead. ahead. Dude, so I, I'm, like, trailing this guy. I'm looking for... I'm, like... Because he just, like, disappeared at a certain point, because I don't want to, like, stay behind him, so, like, this guy's, like, out of his mind, and I didn't want to, like, set off his paranoia. So I'm, like, walking behind this dude. He disappears. I'm like, where the fuck? Now I'm starting to get into weird theories where I'm like, maybe this guy is a fucking time traveler. He is a time he traveler. He just disappeared. And I'm like, how the fuck? He was wearing a blue shorts and a blue shirt. He couldn't miss this fucking dude. He was a crip. He was cripping, yeah, for sure. <laughs> he looked like Joe from the concrete pit. Uh-oh. A replica, dude. He Whoa. almost looked exactly. Perhaps time traveler. 
Perhaps. He might have Unknown. traveled back on time to undo the, mur- the brutal murder of his wife based off of watching too much Sons of Anarchy on TV. <laughs> he's got to go, yeah, he's probably trying to find Netflix or the FX headquarters. Yeah, dude. Like, take that fucking show down. It's too go fucking shoot, sweet, dude. He's going to shoot Jax in the head. <laughs> undo this misery. Dude, so he I, he comes out finally. I'm like, where the fuck is this guy? I see him come out of a pizza place. Fuck, they're there. Are they? Yeah, go ahead. He's <laughs> drinking a Sprite. Yes. He's just sipping on a Sprite. And he's sitting there and I'm like, all right, I start following him again. And I'm like... Call the cops. They're like, well, he's in another district now, dude. He's two, he's two blocks out of our district. There's nothing we can do. And I'm like, dude, this guy's going to fucking get killed. So then he, he, I'm like, all right, this is not my problem. I walk away. Within two seconds, some dude gets up in his face. The guy had his hand down his pants the whole time. Guy's like, get your motherfucking, get out of my fucking face. Your hand down your pants. I'm like, fuck you up. Blah, 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 blah. This guy's about to get punched in the face. I'm like, dude. I'm like, he's fine. Come on. So then the guy's like. 19th Street. I'm like, where are you Damn trying it, to go? Traveler. I'm like, where are you trying to go? 19th Street. And he would just look at a house. And he kept saying like every building was 19th Street. This is terrifying. It was crazy. And then he would go and ring the doorbell. I'm like, dude, stop, stop. I'm like, finally, dude. I get him to a big post office. And I'm like, yo, bro. Oh yeah. 19th Street. You told me this. Right you there. You unleashed bro. him in the fucking. I'm like, that's 19th because the cops wouldn't fucking come. But I'm like, if the post put him office in a federal comes, building. Yeah, put this motherfucker in a federal building. The cops are going to come. Have quick. you checked like the news or anything? Nah, I just he like, might have gone in there and committed a real serious crime. And how did he, why did he attack the post office? <laughs> Just the shaman. Uh, dude. <laughs> the shaman walking a dog like, there's 19. Get in there. Oh, like, cops will, someone will come get, dude, this guy was going to get fucked up. Like he was going to get, he was going to hurt somebody. White guy? Yeah. He just ran into fucking several sassy black women with post office. Dude, he, Whoa. he was getting up. There was these old black dudes. He was getting real close to them. And they were like, hey, man, relax. The one guy was like checking his armband for him. Like, hey, man, like you need to go get help, dude. And he was like 19 street. And like, dude, and they're looking at me and I'm like, I don't know how I became this guy's custodian. (laughs) Got him to the post office. Dude, it was the funniest fucking thing. I was like, 19th Street. He opens the door and looks back at me like, it was like as if I had let someone into heaven. He was just like, like, I'm in here. I was like, 19th Street, bro. And he walked right in, opened the other door, disappeared, and I went home. I was like, fuck this shit. He probably, dude. I don't know. He just, he must have, and I sat there for like two minutes to see if he came, like got bounced right back out. He didn't come out after like two minutes. So I was like, I'm done. Hey, on Sunday, we're going to record another one. Are we really? Oh, shit. You're not going to be back. What is it, Sunday the fifth? The fourth. Fuck. I'll be in Bammer. I'll fi- I'll get I'll get the total deets and figure that all out. Damn it, dude! I'm on the road all of August. We'll have to figure out a Skype connection. So on in August, get ready for a mat heavy fucking month. Yeah, dude. Uh, because it's a lot of Shane loyalists. Eighth, ninth, and tenth. Whew. House of Comedy in Phoenix. Then I'm gonna be in fucking L.A. from like the 14th to the 21st. So all you West Coast dogs. You know, check my Twitter. I'll post some shit. Twenty uh, second, Harrisburg Comedy Zone. That's what. Oh yeah, we're gonna get it. All right. Well, it's that's still coming. fucking three weeks. Uh, yeah. Twenty third and twenty fourth, DC Draft House. Twenty eighth, twenty ninth, thirtieth, thirty first, Cap City in Austin. Yeah. Uh, we're doing it, bro. Come to those, please, because no one knows who the fuck I am. Well, and dude, I'm just gonna go bomb at these empty fucking shitholes. This is a transitory time for the podcast, dude, and people are either going to, like I said. If some of the fucking, uh, as this thing rises out of the ground, if some of the people holding on fall off, that's totally fine. True. It'll just, you know, it'll keep blasting into space. The cast is, uh, don't be, dude, don't fear. Don't fear the Reaper, dude. Exactly. Just whatever happens, happens. Well, dude, I already, we're going to do, we'll, we'll try to figure out a Skype type thing. If that doesn't work, we'll figure it out. I'll, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get fucking GoPros. So then all the all the podcasts while you're gone are gonna be videotaped where people are looking at it. It's all gonna be POV from the speaker and all the videos are gonna be like so if I'm ta- if someone's talking, all the POVs will go on that nice. guy naturally. So all right. either way, let's roll. I gotta go. I love you. Bye.